Coming to you live from deep within... Well, I guess you could say it's a thawing radioactive wasteland? We are the survivors of the alt-right apocalypse. The few, the brave, the bitchy, once more wading into battle against the froggy lobster pick-me hordes. And with one... I swear to God, this, mic this microphone is possessed because it keeps... Yeah, I don't know what's going on with that. Yeah, I, it just keeps changing the gain. Um... If anybody knows how sure microphones work, you know, I'd love to get like a comment explaining what I'm doing wrong, but apparently it just wants to put the gain everywhere. So coming to you live with uh, the, the few, the brave, the bitchy and one possessed microphone that <laughs> will not keep its gain at the same level every time. This is Rent Zerker number 206. Is that correct? 206? Uh... I think that's what I named the room, but I already forgot. Yeah, 206. Okay, number 206. Pick me girls are undercutting the affection economy. And uh, I am Allison. I will be your host uh, uh, of a sort. And uh, with me is Brian. And later on, after she gets her coffee, because I screwed up the time, we'll be Karen. And uh, yeah, so welcome aboard to our discussion. Yes of this lovely offering from our new friend, Hannah Cox. Yeah, yeah, it seems like Hannah Cox has been, she's been like the uh, topic du jour. Mm. Is that what is that a appropriate use of the term du jour? Du jour the, of the day. Yeah. yeah, I mean, usually there's, I mean, there's no more like bedroom feminists anymore, really. They've disappeared for some reason. Not really. Yeah. Now there's like, you know, old, bedroom, bedroom old feminists. haggard, married, super angry feminists and, uh, libertarian feminists okay the 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 bedroom feminists of yesteryear that we did like 10 years ago have now graduated to being the the 30 year old feminists of now is what i've seen yeah so now they're explaining to us why feminism is still good i guess i don't know um why it's made them well not happy but and not particularly empowered because they're always looking at how they're victims of things. But uh, feminism has made them nobody's fool, I guess. Unlike pick -me's. There you go. Right back to the topic. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Did you see how stealthful that was, Brian? <laughs> uh, yes, that was stealthful. Nobody <laughs> saw that coming. <laughs> they never see the pick -me coming. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. All you right. have some things to think before we get oh, yeah, into sure, the sure. video. Let's, let's, yeah. let's do the things. Okay, so we are once more doing our monthly fundraiser at feedthebadger.com slash support. Very much appreciated. It's stalled out a bit, so I might have to do some arm twisting. Uh, I do have a hard limit on today's length of show because I have sort of signed on to do um, a maybe debate with a with a bunch of feminists on the issue of, of uh, rape of men and false accusations on um, spaces. Uh, if you, no. if what, yeah, yeah. Um, and I actually talked to Aiden and she might be joining us as well. Uh, cause she, uh, recently sent me uh, a script for her latest video on false accusations where she went into the false accusation research mine and discovered it's all poo. Oh yeah. Oh, yeah, no, she, um, she did do a video about, or, uh, pretty sure she did, or she, tweeted or something about um yeah no it's like uh the uh the fact that it's like two percent is the lower bound right not the upper bound it's not it's not an at least number it's or it's not a it's a, not an only number it's an at least number um yeah she, and she was like yeah no that's the least of the problems with this research so Yep. Yeah, and if yeah. you stay tuned to uh, Honey Badger Radio on at uh, Twitter, it's Honey Badger Bite at Twitter. We'll be, I'll be doing that X space with another Twitter user called Brooke, Brooke, who has very graciously invited us on previous streams. And again, yeah, we've had her on our show before, Buckeye Betty on Twitter, I think. Yeah, uh, we've had her on for a fireside chat. And oh. yeah, so she's been hosting these kinds of streams. She's hoping to get a debate going, but I think. Uh, I think I might have scared off a feminist. Well, maybe you'll just get like the uh, Evo Psych Trad Bro guys on again. 
Yay. I, I don't know if they, that's really in their wheelhouse, uh, the rape of men and and false accusations. Yeah, they'll just say, tell them to walk it off and false like just like just game harder, bro. Just maintain no, frame and uh, it's a shit test when they rape you. Don't you know that? I this is a shit test, Allison. I think they <laughs> care about false accusations, Brian. Yeah, they they probably do. Particularly people who follow Andrew Tate. You see, um, give them that. Give them that. Speaking of give false, speaking of false accusations, did you hear about? Um, okay, so you guys are familiar with Claudine Gay, right? He was the Harvard dean. Oh yeah, and and then was... the black, the black economics professor, the youngest black professor to get tenure at Harvard, age thirty, right? Yes. And, and then he looked into police violence against uh, blacks. Uh, and found that like the narrative does not fit the reality and yeah, no, for his he, trouble he was this, essentially he was, forced to like go under given, police protection he was and given the, Aaron the treatment yeah he got the Aaron Pitsy treatment on top of that one of the things that was used to suspend him without pay was a false allegation yeah so like uh, but I'm bringing it up because false allegations are extremely powerful tools we know this already to be true and there's yeah. just like endless endless evidence of that and claudine, yeah, the claudine gay was right there right basically saying he needs to go he needs to go and yep. uh, she, she spearheaded that because she i don't think she was the president at the time but she was a professor there and so she just like launched a bunch of blacklisting against this guy and uh, mounted a campaign to to get him to like get them to fire him and you know but he uh he found that and this is the thing that pisses me off, right? Because he found that uh, when it comes to uh, non-lethal kind of everyday ordinary use force, you know, shoving someone up against a car or, you know, like frisking them or whatever, right? Um, blacks were actually much more uh, likely to, to experience that, right? But when it came to getting shot at... Uh, Blacks were 8.5% less likely than Hispanics to get shot at, and 23.8% less likely than whites to get shot at by police. And then he concluded that there was no racial bias in police shootings. And I'm like, wait a minute. Yeah. Like, no and, bias and against blacks. Maybe bias in favor of blacks. And I can understand that. I mean, if you know that if you shoot at someone and it turns out like to even be justified, right? But that person is black, you're in for a world of hurt, right? Yeah. Okay. That's so Darren Wilson. So. So if you wanna if you wanna come and hang out on spaces and talk about false accusations and uh, the rape of men and how, potentially a debate with feminists, we'll see. Uh, once again, just check it out. There should be a link eventually on uh, Honey Badger Radio's. Um, some people, website. some people don't have. Uh, some of the people that watch us are not on Twitter. So I was thinking, maybe after this is over, I can do a, a live stream on the arcade channel and just sort of like have that playing in the background. Or you could, I mean, like you can. You don't need to have a Twitter account to look at Twitter. No. Uh, yeah, I guess so. Yeah. The spaces are different. As far as I can tell, you do need to have a Twitter account to be part of spaces. I think so, so to working. listen in. Just just give oh, a okay. Brooke a heads up if that's um if you if you're gonna Yeah, I'll that. let her know if I decide yeah. to do that. So potentially, you know, we might uh have it out. It's I mean it's not really gonna steal much of her trap if it goes on Badger Lives or Badger Arcade. But anyway, so go check that out on our Twitter um Twitter channel. And uh once again, like I was began uh, we are doing our monthly fundraiser, feedthebadger.com slash support. Please help us out because we exist because you guys help us. You, you guys support us each month. And just imagine if our our wonderful show wasn't in existence, how that would feel. And and take that feeling and go help us, feedthebadger.com slash support. And also, if you want to send us a message, feedthebadger.com slash just a tip throughout the show. If you want to give us a tip. Uh, if any kind of substantial amount, please do it through feedthebadger.com slash just the tip because... YouTube takes um if you if you think about it you send 50 bucks YouTube will take 25 of that um whereas if you do it through feedthebadger.com slash just the tip we get like 48 dollars I think um so it's, it's a bit of a bit of a big difference for us 
Uh, again, I know it's really convenient to use the super chat, but it does really help us out if you go to feedthebadger.com slash just the tip and do it there. Also, you avoid all of YouTube's comment enhancement. <laughs> That's what we'll call it. We'll call it comment enhancement. So, once again, feedthebadger.com slash support to make sure we can keep doing these shows and feedthebadger.com slash just the tip to send us a message. Send us your thoughts. Tell us comment. we're not screaming into the void. Comment enhancement. Is that like election fortification? Yes. Huh? All right. Or, Kevin, um, you're all right. not coming out. I'm on the freaking air, and you, you're in there because you ate a spring roll off the kitchen counter. <laughs> oh, my God. In the bad dog box. And, he, and she probably isn't even tall enough to just... Like, like Skippy's tall enough that if he, if he was bad... He could probably just lick things off the counter. Oh, she can lick things off the counter. Really? She's I mean, she, she can get up there, yeah. You know, but she's, she's a long... She could sit. He, he could sit at the counter and his, his, his eyes are over the top of the counter. Yeah, oh. no. Kevin's not that big. She gets up with her paws, front paws mm. on the kitchen counter. And then she, uh, she licks the cutting board. But you know, my, Scipio has never done that. He's never really stolen food from the counter. He just oh. will sit there and wait for us to give it to him, or for the cats to drop it off for off. You know, yeah, the they. Yeah, him. yeah. No, uh, Georgia used to. She uh, used to live with with a cat who would. Um, she, the 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 previous owners would order chicken wings or something, and they'd leave the, you know, the bones on the counter, and uh, and the cat would eat the you know little bits of stuff off of the bones, and then lick the bones to the dog mm. and uh yeah, yeah. They, they have some kind of symbiosis those they, they did yeah yeah no one... that's how i discovered that uh Scipio likes green beans the, i don't the cat has no interest in the green beans but she would drop them off on the floor for him well there you go and green beans are good for dogs yeah okay any, all right uh, any kind of legume i think any kind of legume well you heard it here legumes are good for dogs Oh God! Yeah, Both no. accusations it, are bad for society. You, you want you want to know what makes a dog go crazy? What sugar sugar snap peas? Ooh, okay. Well, I'll keep that in mind. Snap oh, yeah. peas. Yeah. Snap yeah. peas. Jojo loves snap peas. Yeah. Lindsay oh, gets them sometimes, yeah. and he he Every loves them. Every dog. Yeah. Every well, dog. Loves them. I don't get it. I don't. I don't get it. I'm not a fan. But let me try to awkwardly bring this back to topic. Okay. I do incredibly uh, pick me ish pick me's, me and Karen. Oh yeah. Um, yeah, we're we're like the biggest pick me's. Mm. Mm-hmm. Apparently, yes. Yes. Uh you know, I have it on good authority. So we shall be discussing this Hannah Cox discussion of pick me's, which we are two very large examples of. So Yes. Okay. Yes, no, I, I I've been a pick me. Uh, for at least since 2010. Yeah, um, I probably when, I think when I, I start when I started talking about this stuff online, um, which I only did because um, the man who is my husband uh, encouraged me to do so. Oh my God, you're like a double pick me, Karen. Yeah, like I, at the very least, I can say you know uh, my husband is like yeah why are, uh, yeah he's not, like, yeah he's he's not he's not like no 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 my uh, my my guy uh, Mike he he encouraged me. I mean uh, he encouraged a blog. And my, my he encouraged husband. me to start a blog, and then and then he sent my first blog post to Warren Farrell, and then Warren Farrell got back to me, Ooh, and was like, nice. you know, uh, oh yeah, no, you need to keep keep doing this. This is this is great, and uh, awesome. Yeah, but, yeah. Like, uh, my husband is like, uh, he, he encourages me with my writing, but he's like, why are you on Twitter again? Get off Twitter. Oh. Um. My yeah. husband's like, uh, Marvin K. Mooney, will you please stop typing now? <laughs> okay, so let's, uh, as two gigantic pick let us respond to Hannah Cox. All right, so I'm going to start playing the video. This begins with a TikTok video of an example, I guess, that Hannah Cox is launching off of. Well, let's see. For her video about pick me girls. Let's rate this example, Karen. Yeah, um, let let's oh, let, let yeah, me play no, it. It's like this, 30 seconds. On on this, on one, which what what would, what would be the lowest pick me number? What 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 would be an example of the lowest pick me? Okay, well, I have no I'm idea. Just I'm just gonna say, I'm just gonna say, 
She's an extremely attractive woman. This oh. this woman here. So is this? Him? Yeah, she's got this Scarlett Johansson no, thing going on. Go this hard. is this is the pick me. Yeah, this this is, is the pick me. Yes. Yeah. No. So I mean, possibly a pick me. Possibly. Well, because she's attractive. Well, because at least she's got the goods, right? Like. She, well, let's see what she says. Let's she's, see what she says. She's, okay, let's she's play like, the video. She's all put uh, together just... and she's made up and, you know, she's like looking real. She's looking like she's about to go on a date. Okay. okay so. But is that it, really. Qual I, that's not really the quality for that. A pick that's me. not necessarily no, no. the no, only because... thing. But if you're going to be a pick me, you better look date ready. Uh, okay. Well, then I'm definitely not a pick me. Yeah. But, no, uh... me neither. I think uh, I think I remember you straightened your hair and put on makeup for one of your first videos. Yeah, I never did that again. It's a lot of work. Yeah. It was right. yeah, no, so, a lot of work. I'm not a girl's girl. Um and I have reasons for that because like y'all bitches are trifling. Like trifling. Okay, that's interesting. This is I'm okay. sorry, but if you've if you've ever tried to make another female friend nowadays, Tell me how that's going for you, because okay, I genuinely want to know. Stop. And then we she's gotta do gonna... the banana. All right. And then she's gonna put what on more makeup. And it's just like... <laughs> what does trifling mean? Uh, trifling okay. means we need a I'm, slang I'm guessing check here. Shallow, uh, you know, like absolutely no. Let depth me do a slang character. check. Um, you know, Go look up. Look it up on uh, uh, on on uh, Urban Dictionary or something. Oh, is um, it trifling to mean cheating or false is the oldest one. Oh, okay. okay. Like oh, this, okay. yeah, like not yeah, good friends, okay. essentially. Oh. Dishonest, manipulative. 15th century slang. We're going back. Okay, interesting. It's Southern. It's Southern. It's not old. No, it's, it says it's, it's from the 15th century. Well, I know, but people have been using it in the South forever. Like it's still, and we still it, use that term. France even longer than that. So there you go. Yeah, it's like being a backstabber. Like yeah. being like double, uh, you know, two-faced. Okay. So anyway, yeah, let's keep going. No, let's talk about this. Like... Why? What? What is there? What? All right. Okay. Fine, we'll go. She's criticizing women. Well, like she's saying, I can't make friends with girls because they're trifling. Well, because this is like... this is uh, because she criticizes women. This they're makes her loyal. a pick me. Yeah, well, okay. Well, I mean, we can continue or we can discuss this because there's some stuff to say. Like, the, the majority of the abuse for women online comes from other women. That's a fact. Well, yeah, and, and I mean, like, it, okay, and I don't, you know, as someone who doesn't have a whole lot of female friends, um, I have found that um, men are more likely to be... Um, steady, solid, you know, like not fuck with you, not like, uh, no, no, like drama, unless they're a narcissist. You well, know. not, not screw with you, not just forget to ever pick up the phone if they know that you're in a bad spot, right? Mm -hmm. You know, that you're going through something difficult, all of that. Um, uh, and, and definitely, uh, less likely to uh, stab you in the back. So generally less likely to uh, try to steal your husband. Um, um, I would, in my experience. Allison? Oh. Allison? Oh, my apologies. I, oh, I had a bit of a possessed okay. microphone moment. Okay, so in my experience, from my experience, I've been talking about these issues for about 20 years. I would say that even 20 years ago, the feminists were more polite because the online space was a lot more, I don't know, it was a little more rarefied, shall we say. Ooh, um, yeah, no, it was it was the polite form of telling you you're a horrible person. Yeah, yeah politer, you know, I mean, it wasn't great. If you disagree, you definitely, you, you got shit, shit on. Even yeah. when you were just like, well, okay, I'm trying to understand this. That's where mm -hmm. I started. I'm like, I'm trying to understand this. I, I, you, could you stop abusing me? Because that doesn't make me think you were right. Um, mm -hmm. And uh, and then just sort of snowballed from there. But lately, uh, for for a good long time, for the most part, I was only like talking mostly to to male majority spaces. I rarely got insulted. I mean, you get assaulted occasionally, like 
um, you know, you're ugly, fuck off, that kind of thing. And, but it was rare. It was rare. It was actually more often men would either compliment me on, you know, my thoughts, which is more common, or yeah. occasionally they'd say, oh, you're so cute or whatever. And I'd be like, okay, well, thank you. Um, it's not really what it's about, but it's okay. You know, it's not impolite as far as I can tell. Yeah. Um, and, but then recently, like in 2020, because of the, the, I suppose the Johnny Depp, uh, trial, yeah. a whole, there was a whole huge influx of women into this space and not just in honey badger. Apparently it also happened at a voice for men. Um, like there's a whole bunch of women checking this stuff out because I guess they got a peek behind the curtain. Yeah. And now I'm not saying that those women who were like generally pro Johnny Depp or recognize that Amber Heard is a complete another sociopath were the ones doing this actually it was quite the reverse, but the, their fellow travelers who were the harpies, shall we say, following the herd, um, they increased the level of abuse that I get for my physical appearance from almost zero to like multiple times a day. Oh yeah. Like, I have been told I am balding, which I am not, uh, that my teeth are bad, which is sort of true. Um, you know, that, uh, oh, uh, I don't know that I'm gig uh, obese. I mean, I guess I'm not, I'm not skinny. Um, you know, all of this other stuff, constant stream of picking yeah. at things that they can, everything that they can possibly find to pick at. And I'm like, well, so are you going to take responsibility for that ladies? Because uh, this is a very, very ugly look. Um, yeah, no, it's, it's, um, I, I always, you know, like the only times that I ever got shots on my appearance, um, like on my YouTube channel, right, from men, was when they looked at the thumbnail and saw the short hair. And then they looked at the title of the video, look out, it's a nice guy, destroy him or whatever, right? And, uh, you know, the ironically named uh, title of the video, right? And, uh, and they didn't watch the video and they let, it would leave a drive-by comment. And then all the other men on the channel, right, would see the comment and go like, did you watch the video? Because I think you might want to watch the video. And then... Half the time, these guys would apologize. Sorry, I was just reacting because I thought you were a feminist. And it's just like, well, yeah. well don't, you know, I, don't even... freaking do that, though. But, I mean, it's it's not common. Yeah, I mean, it is it isn't very common. And, um, uh, you know, like for me, if, if men disagree with me, most often I would get the, well, you're just not, cons and, and, you know, like the, 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 you know, the typical, well, actually... Which, yeah. which I would say with fondness, you know, just the, yeah. the, the autistic spurging out on some detail. Yeah. And, uh, and very much less often would men go after you for your appearance. Yeah. Like, um, and, uh, but yeah, so, <laughs> uh, yeah, that's a very, very bad look. And uh, she's got a point. She's got a point. And I think one of the things that is really important is... A lot of what we 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 thumb our nose at in terms of the virtues of the past were about controlling intra sexual competition between women. Oh yeah. So making sure women can live with each other, and we've thrown all of that out, thinking, "Well, let's get rid of all of the misogynist standards on women." Oops! Now yeah. you're opening the floodgates to an absolutely low level of competition between yeah, yeah. women. We're in Bonobo Town now, Allison. Yeah, we're in Bonobo Town now. Okay, let's keep going. We're going back to the video now. So yes. let me just uh, put it back on the screen. Uh, all right, here we go. Let's play some more. Girls nowadays are not nice and they don't have your back. They're not your friends. Uh, maybe it's just you because I have tried making female friends lately and it's going great. Hey guys, I'm Hannah Cox really? with Base Politics and you're watching oh, my show History. Hannah Cox, mm. okay. With the <laughs> okay, I want to right. defend myself because I got called out by you and I got called out by someone else, uh, uh, a, paid, uh, it's a supporter. Maybe it's catty, but every time I see the obvious Botox, 
right? And it's not just her, it's a whole bunch of other women in this particular thought sphere. I realized what it was that was triggering me, if I can use that I, term. I, I don't care about the Botox. I don't care. I don't even care if she used like a plumping serum, you know, applies it to her lips, like that but can infomercial I, can I get that I get on all my YouTube videos, right? She draws outside the lines. You outside just hate the, the lines. So you hate the sloppy drawing. Okay, well, here's what was bothering me. And I finally, I had to drill down to finally articulate it. I, I just can't this stand the drawing woman. outside the lines. I, I've never been able to stand it. I've I've known women who have done this all my life. And it's like you look like Ronald McDonald. Okay. That's what that you look like. The, the overall <laughs> point is da, 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 da. clowns and you. Okay. The overall point is beyond the aesthetic. What was bugging me is the fact that I could see she is extending no good no good faith to men no willingness to understand them at the same time as she is presenting herself as having dick sucking lips for what reason in order to gain sexual power over men so she has no interest in really the man as a person she just has an interest in the man as a slave and that is reflected i mean it's not like she's got the dick sucking lips because um well <sighs> I don't know. She's the, the, the combination of the inability to look at, at the situation from men's point of view and the, and the parent desire to want to elicit power over them from sex is really pissing me off. Yeah. Like you, you will, you will damage your body by injecting a poison into it, but you will not cultivate human understanding that has to be a freaking degeneracy of the highest order. I'm just saying. I don't know. I still can't well, get over the drawing high. outside the lines. Okay, yeah, okay. All right, let's go on. I will not bring it up again. Okay. Trionics, where every week I talk about women's issues from a sane middle ground perspective. If you like this episode, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and also check out former videos in the series. This week we're talking about pick me girls and why they need wow, to reform the their ways. This episode oh, that's the middle ground, is it? Uh, that's yeah, the middle no, ground. But, so but she, she's a pick me. Yeah, of course she's a pick me. But here's the thing. She's essentially saying Women cannot criticize women, right? I know, eh? Yeah, women cannot criticize women. Women can't even point out, hey, social media has really brought the worst out in women. Oh. The worst, okay? Now everybody is, 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 has a, is like one click away from being the, the Omega girl who's sitting in the, in the corner hiding from, the, from, the, from every other woman in the school, right? There, there's two women I trust in this world. Uh, oh, one yeah. is my mother, and one is my friend Shari. And uh, you might have noticed that neither of my sisters are in there. <laughs> uh, I do. And oh. uh, and and you know they were in there until COVID. Oh. So. All right. So. The 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 point is that she's essentially saying that women can't criticize women. And if they do, they're out of the sisterhood. Well, what kind of sisterhood do you want to be part of if you're not able to criticize the behavior of the women in it? Mm. Like you, you, that means you have to tolerate any level of abuse in order to be part of the sisterhood. That's sick. No thanks. Move on. <laughs> like, moving on. Eh. All right. Yeah. I got a super chat. I'm just going to read it out really quick before it disappears. Alvernada Re Retro gives us $5 Canadian and says, three cheers for the pick me queens. Hurrah, hurrah, hurrah. Yay, cool girls. Thank you, Albert, for that super chat. Okay, let's play more. Hannah. Penises. Yeah. episode is called Death to the Pick Me's. No, not because I wish these girls physical harm, but rather because I wish a speedy death to their toxic outlook and attitude on life. Let's begin. For the uninitiated, Ooh. let's turn to dictionary.com to cover what exactly defines a do pick me really girl. Need to do a this? pick me girl is a woman who obsessively does. Uh, what was that? Do you want me to pause? What? Yeah, sure. Let's let's hear. So I'm guessing. Okay, let's hear her definition. Is, is this? Of 
Is this uh, Urban yeah. Dictionary? Because we all know that's basically Webster. Desires male approval and validation, often at the expense of other women. Despite the word girl being used, the term pick me girl is almost always used to describe adult women. The term pick me girl is used to describe a woman who obviously and obsessively works to gain men's attention or acceptance. Typically, a pick me girl loves to talk about how she's not like other women, especially in ways considered typically feminine. A pick me girl may point out how she doesn't wear makeup or prefers sports to fashion. All right, I'm I'm pausing there just for the banana. So apparently, a pick me girl is all is only is used um, at the expense of other women. Pick me girl's behavior is at the expense often of other women. So when you guys are being called pick me girls, okay, are well, you are you harming women fits, with your actions? Right? Are you doing this at the expense of other women? No, but yes, we are actually. Um, it depends no, on so. what other women want in terms of profiting from what the gibbs that okay, society yeah, yeah, gives yeah, them. Right. Okay, like let's yeah, let me. No, give we an don't example. wear makeup. I don't like sports, but I do tend towards masculine activities. Um, I was actually kind of happy that this is an earlier stream than I thought because it'll give me time to fix the toilet. Um, but so. It's like, okay, so I'm not typically feminine, I, and I don't wear makeup. So basically, this is, uh, I, this is I'm gender not shaming fashion. masculine women. Yeah, yeah. And, oh, interesting. Uh, interesting look there. Yeah, but it's like, okay, pick me. Okay, how does that, how does, how does being, okay, a woman who doesn't really like feminine things or activity like how does that translate into an attempt to get men's attention and desire it doesn't really i mean it just it just like literally she's saying uh butch women are gross well it, i mean most men aren't really particularly attracted to butch women. well they like they like tomboys apparently at least wait, wait what one other women. one other thing i have a problem with this is is that the suggestion is that a pick me girl who says I'm not like other girls or, uh, you know, is into sports as opposed to fashion or is not, you know, typically feminine or whatever it is. The suggestion is, is that it's not genuine, that that pick me girls are not being honest with themselves about the kind of person they are. And they're only doing this to get male attention. But if a girl happens to be more masculine minded and this is not some show they're putting on some performance or mask that they're wearing you know like they're like like it says here um i don't know if she's gonna read this part but it says the pick me girl is often discussed as the female equivalent of a simp a term often used to describe a man who obsessively seeks female attention now i wouldn't i don't know if it's that's comparable but maybe if what okay i'm just i don't want to take up too much time because i know people don't aren't listening for me but when a woman is be does not behave in a typically um i guess in a typical fashion that people expect and that makes her a tomboy or maybe she likes football or whatever and i think it's stupid that people even have these preconceived notions anyway but if it turns out that they say look you know i'm i'm not like other girls and it they and they are legitimately not like other girls <laughs> then i don't see why it's bad uh, for them to be themselves, even if that's a little atypical, like my wife is kind of tomboyish and she, you know, is into MMA and she likes to play video games and, but she's not traditionally feminine. She only started wearing dresses like in the last six months. she never really did that before and she likes it, but I mean, she still, she doesn't change that much. None of that. Th this is sort of assuming that her whole life was a lie just to get male attention and approval, which doesn't make sense. And it, when I say it's not really a good comparison to the simp, I think it's maybe a better comparison to what we call the nice guy. And I know that people don't like that term being used in a pejorative way. But what I mean is there are men who um, pretend to be someone else because they think that the person that they are is not attractive. And so they put on a mask. They basically like act in a way that they think women will appreciate and find attractive. This is what male feminists do. I think that's the equivalent. But again, 
you know, that is assuming that that is not the kind of person they normally are. So this is, I don't know if you guys are following what I'm saying, but yeah, yeah, yeah. the what, pick what me girl saying? thing is what, weird because there is a, there is an allegation of dishonesty, like embedded in the label. Like when they call you pick me girls, they're saying, this isn't what you normally are. You're the way that we think you should be. And you're lying to all of your, the men that watch oh, yeah, you or not, follow you or talk no, to no, you. No, 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 no. What you're saying, Brian, is that Allison and I are actually trans men. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> oh, good Lord. Um, yes. Because, because apparently the only way to be a not very feminine presenting woman, right? Is, uh, if I chop my tits off and uh, get a phalloplasty. I just, this is so, okay. Yeah, you're absolutely right. It, there's, an, it, there's an allegation of dishonesty at the heart of this. Well, if I was really committed to being who I am, I would chop my tits off and get a phalloplasty and just get, a, get it. A, you know, sometimes I dream. Sometimes I have sex dreams where I have a penis. You ever had that, Allison? Uh, but it's yes. quite fun. Uh, I just, I don't necessarily like going this deep into my psyche. Okay, think, yeah, no, but it's yeah, okay. It's don't even ask me about the sex dream I had about Tucker Carlson because that was something you the else top? again. Was he making the Tucker face in your sex dream? Like, <laughs> oh, you want to hear? You want to hear? No, that? I don't. No. 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 He, was no. Doing, no, he was doing a segment. We're gonna he hear. was doing a segment where he had some like scrawny Russian prostitute or something laid out on a table, and and Tucker, his you want guest, to fuck a real woman? His guest was telling him, "Oh, go ahead and just just press your fist on her anus, just just gently, just gently." And then and then he's like doing it, and he's like just kind of starts really mashing his fist in there, and then he looks up and he gives the Tucker laugh, <laughs> right? <laughs> And I'm like, what the fuck? <laughs> and I woke up. Okay. Yeah. All right. Well, that that was something that happened. Okay. Um. I don't know if she was Russian. She could have been just Eastern European looking. Very critical detail. Now. Um. Well, you're she right. had a scrawny little butt. You know, she was like tall and skinny. You know, small boobs. Oh. Okay. Yeah. I just I, okay. So to, to get back to Brian's point, there's some allegation of non-authenticity to pick me girls, and yeah, that is a good point because honestly, I'm not putting it on. Like I'm not pretending to be interested in these things to to get the interest of men. And incidentally, that's not how it works, feminists. Yeah, no, my husband. You guys, you guys get the interest, like. You are the ones who are engaging the instinct to save the damsel. We're the ones oh, yeah. who aren't. You yeah, know? And no, my husband, he he was like, okay, we're going to do the Marie Kondo thing. The Marie Kondo thing. We're doing it. We're doing it this weekend, right? This is months ago, months and months ago, right? First thing you have to do, get all your clothes together and lift every item up. And if it doesn't spark joy. Oh, does this bring me joy? Is that what you're talking about? Yeah, if it doesn't spark oh, yeah, joy, yeah, yeah. get rid of it, right? Okay, so I did that. I got rid of everything that didn't spark joy. I was just like, oh God, I haven't worn this in like 12 years. It sparks no joy. I'm, I don't, I can't see myself wearing it again. So all I was left was, with was two pairs of jeans, a couple pairs of lounge pants, and 18 tank tops. Okay. <laughs> all right. And, and okay. And then he's like. This is why her cartoon oh, is wearing a tank top, guys. We got to go to the gala. The Christmas gala for my work. And I'm like, oh, oh, uh, I, I don't, I don't, I don't got anything to wear. Yeah. And he's like, what do you mean you don't have anything to wear? I was like, you made me do the Marie Kondo thing. I had to throw everything away because it didn't spark joy. Now all I have is jeans and tank tops. And lucky for me, there was a bin underneath the bed that I forgot was there. And it had a three quarter length, fine knit cardigan sweater with a belt that I could put on over my tank top. Mm. And jeans. Okay. And jeans. And, uh, and look somewhat presentable for this like lush gala of 4,000 people, right? That, you know. And then I was like, uh, I go to 
at, go along the buffet to see if I can find anything that there that he can eat. They didn't even have crudite. They didn't even have a, a green salad. Nothing. I come back with an empty plate. And I'm like, yeah, no, everything, everything on that buffet, it'll kill you. And he's like, oh, okay. And uh, no beverages that he could drink. So he just sat there and drank water at the gala. Ugh. Good luck. I got, uh, okay, go ahead. We paid I wanna, well, I want to keep that. going, but I got some super chats I should read really quick. Um, so I'm going to read them. And then if there's like a point that you wanted to finish, go ahead. Well, and, I just and wanted we'll to just say, continue. I just wanted to say the reason that I don't wear dresses is because I don't wear dresses. They don't spark joy. Mm. Not there you go. At least. Right? She's saying like, that this is an unfair. But you're being thing. a see. This that's the thing, though. Like, thing, right? if you authentically sure. don't like wearing dresses and you prefer to wear tank tops, that then the 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 allegation that you're thing. being a pick me is is silly. It's like it's like, it's, it's almost like made up. So why is the thing is Hannah Cox is is supposedly like an intellectual libertarian like one two thousand IQ person. And she can't even like conceive of the idea that there are women who literally are not like their oh, peers, oh. <laughs> you know? Can I just get something in before you do the super chats? All right, you, this, this accusation of authenticity. Okay, maybe these women, like me, they don't care. They're not evaluating themselves relative to you outside of moral markers based on behavior. Well, they're, not they're, not for men. they're not actually after men. They're not that not actually after men's approval. They're just doing something that they enjoy. Like here's here's the news flash to everybody who thinks that a tomboy is a pick me, which which is essentially what this is saying. Tomboys are pick me's. Tomboys are just doing what they want to do. Most likely, they're just just living their life. They're living their best life. They're enjoying themselves, and they just so happen to be attractive to men because of it. Right. And you guys who are, let's face it, you, 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 a lot of the feminine women are really, and I don't mean to make this between like masculine and feminine women are because it's not because there's a lot of feminine women who are also living their best lives and they, and they just, and they're attractive to men. Right. But here's the thing, the feminine women who are putting on all this, you're getting Botox, putting on all this makeup, putting on, who are literally doing this to attract men. They look at the women who are doing nothing, no makeup, no fancy clothes, out covered in mud, having fun, doing, doing um, boyish things, and they see these women getting male attention and they consider it all to be illegitimate because they're not doing it in the way that they're doing it. And it, it looks to them like some kind of black magic, some horrible yeah, black magic even... that they don't understand. Sometimes not even having fun. I mean, like when I'm out shoveling snow, women walk by and they're like, they think that I'm single. Mm. And it's just like, no, I just, I'm the one who shovels the snow. My mm. husband's the one who makes the six figures. I'm the one who spends his money and shovels the snow. Mm. Mm. Yeah. But like, you see what I'm getting at? It's like the tomboys are just being who they are. It happens to be attractive to wimp to men. And these women who spend so much time trying to be attractive to men, I guarantee Hannah Cox thinks about being attractive to men infinitely more than I do, or Karen <laughs> does. Like, I, 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 I don't spend a lot of time thinking about that at all, to be honest. And uh, There are days when I yeah. don't even look, look in the mirror before I leave the house, and then I get in the car, and I take a glance at myself, in the rearview mirror, and I'm like, "Fuck, you got a bat. You got a bat in the bat cave or something?" Yeah, like no, that. I got no, I got I got bed Some head, you know, or I got like boogers, goongas still in my eyes or whatever. Okay, but but the point is that she looks at women who are obviously not trying, and she <laughs> sees that they're getting attention from men, and it seems completely illegitimate because they're playing, they're 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 cheating the game, and you know what it is. It's because tomboys can appreciate men's hobbies. I mean, you know what? Not even tomboys. Like, Cleopatra wasn't a tomboy. But she could talk to men. She could take an interest in the things that they took an interest in. She was pres presumably a very feminine woman. At least the way, you know, she she was chic. And, presented, she, yeah. and yeah. 
but she had an interest in men's interests. She had ability to talk to them. They regarded her as charming because she took an interest, right? That is something that, that a woman like Hannah apparently looks at and says, this is illegitimate. Why? Because she's weirded out by men at the same time as she apparently puts a great deal of emphasis into becoming desirable to them, which she can't deny because the physical evidence is there. It's all over her face. It's all over her. Right? Okay. And, I, and you know, like I said, it's not about the makeup. And it's not about being feminine. It's about this kind of squealy, competitive jealousy. Like, I'm pretty sure a feminine woman who's being feminine because she enjoys it isn't looking at tomboy who's being a masculine because she enjoys it and says, well, she's getting attention that I deserve. Because she's enjoying her life. She's painting her freaking nails. Like all of the, the women on those nail painting uh, reddits that I sometimes go to because it's it's fascinating. You know, I yeah. don't think they care. They're busy putting like Michelangelo's David on their nails, which yeah. is astounding. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you know, they're, they're, and, and the ones the who do the ceiling of the Sistine Chapel yeah. on their nails, you know, and the ones who do the elaborate makeup that looks crazy but just is so it's enticing. Interesting. It's interesting yeah. and enticing. They don't care either because they're living their best life. The problem here is that women are looking at these women who are doing the things they're doing specifically to get male attention are looking at the women who are not doing those things and saying they're getting male attention. That's not fair. Yeah. That's they're they don't deserve they don't they don't have a right to that that resource that's our resource and then they call them pickmies which is the exact opposite of what's happening. Oh, good grief! Okay. All right. Well, and you have you have to realize too, you know, like women do deserve criticism. Yes, they do. If 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 women didn't deserve criticism, I wouldn't only have one female friend. Um. Like I, I, uh, um, I can see the only you... one. She's the only one I trust. I mean, I consider you a friend and Hannah. Oh, well, okay. Yeah, but we're not. Okay. Yes. You're my friend. Okay. Hannah too. And Lauren. Okay, I extorted. How about, about you? How about you? We wouldn't, we wouldn't, <laughs> we wouldn't even know each other if it wasn't for like this project that we're. Well, yeah, uh, you wouldn't know a lot of people of, in your right? life it wasn't for mutual projects but that's the thing but, like i i bond better with other people with specifically women through a mutual project which is something that i think is masculine too yeah most women aren't really interested they would they just want to go out and have a good time or whatever mm. and it's just like, fine eh. okay let's let's keep going okay. all right i got a super chat from albernita retro again Gives us five dollars. Canadian says, "Pick me, girl is cool girl spelled sideways." Ask Amy Dunn. Lord forbid a chick enjoys sports, fast food, and doing it doggy style during the hockey game. A. Eh? And I think Amy Dunn is the character from Gone Girl who does a whole thing about the cool girl, but that's a monologue from the book because yeah, that's what the author. Monologue. Monologue. Yeah, it's from the book. I think. And it yeah. Finds out that the woman that she's directing it at is actually with a female friend, and they're just chilling. Well. Yeah. 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 So it's it's the whole monologue is actually against women who monologue this shit. <laughs> like apparently Hannah Cox. So let's keep going. And then Zarynx gives us two dollars and says Brian asked for Karen's story, but it was worth it. Thank you, Zarynx. Okay, I'm gonna play yeah. more of the video. Groundbreaking. Pit Me Girl is often discussed as the female equivalent of a simp, a term often used to describe a man who obsessively seeks female attention. Like simp, pick me girl is almost always used as a negative term. In short, these women actively dislike other women and they often work to belittle them in order really? to gain the male validation and attention that they so like, desperately what the want. Hell? Is that just complete projection from stem to stern there? Uh, You're I belittling. Uh, okay, like, uh, no, I, I mean, we criticize women all the time. Um, but, you know, like, it, I don't, There's I don't think we though. criticize men uh, as as much as we criticize women, but um, but that's because there's plenty of criticism of men out there. 
right? It's yeah. like, that's a saturated market. You know, um, I was thinking about this. If you think about it, men keep other men in check all the time. Oh, the yeah. entire justice system is men keeping men in check. And there's a, in, in, the, in Canada, and I think in the States, there is a whole entire body of Judas Prudence that has emerged since the 60s that exclusively, almost exclusively deals with men's violence against women. So punishing men's oh, violence yeah. against women. There are laws that do not apply to women's violence against men that basically apply only to men's violence against women. Men put that in place to yeah. protect women. They, an entire like new form of Judas Prudence to protect there, women. You know, I there. like the fact that you're mispronouncing it in that way because it is kind of Judas Prudence. <laughs> um, but it's it's an unintended pun, Judas Prudence. Okay, so I there's a and so men keep other men in check. They they um, police other men and other men's behavior towards women. And there's like you can lie about it, but it's not the case. Oh yeah, no, and you know what you know what the special jurisprudence is for for women. Um, uh, infanticide laws. Yep. So if if a woman kills her baby, um, she can only be jailed for X number of years. Um, I think it's five, something like that. Uh, whereas um, if a man kills his baby, you know, then it's like fourteen or fifteen years or whatever it is. Despite the fact that men can also go through postpartum depression and psychosis. Because yeah. there are hormone, hormonal shifts as well, although they apparently don't as much. Uh, but okay, anyway. Well, it's 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 not as serious, but um, but yeah, no men. men I got do, into an argument with men, a feminist about that, and I said, "So what you're saying is that when men go through the hormonal changes associated with pregnancy, they become more loving, and women become more aggressive and violent towards their children." <laughs> and she's like, "Yeah, this is what, what I'm saying. It's exactly what you're saying. You're saying yeah, that." No. No, what what happens? What happens is men's testosterone levels drop uh, when they find out that their partner is pregnant, and those levels remain fairly low um, throughout early childhood of, of their children, uh, throughout like the baby years. And there's a reason for that, and it's to drive them out of the house where they can go get the testosterone effect and bring home the bacon, right? get that surge of testosterone from making money, killing the taper, whatever, right? You know, and come home and share it with their family. Um, but what does low testosterone do? It makes you depressed. It makes you anxious. It makes you irritable. It makes you uh, quick to anger, shorter fuse, all of those things, right? Mm -hmm. So if you, if you don't go out and replenish, on a regular basis. So if you're like chronically unemployed or something like that, uh, if you don't have that kind of sense of daily making a killing, you know, in the forest or in the stock market or, you know, at work or whatever, right? Like bringing home the resources. If you don't have that, Right, it can be really, 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 really depressing for a man, and he can get really irritable and very short-tempered and and frustrate easily frustrated. So, I mean, it, it I mean, it exists for a reason. Yep. Uh, this drop in testosterone, and part of that is probably to make him less uh, overtly aggressive. Um, well, it's not aggressive. It's it's like the testosterone is more status seeking right yes yeah so it, it probably means that in part he also focuses more on his family so I mean, there's other hormonal effects but that's a little bit beside the point um we should probably get back to the pick me psychology yeah. and yeah i think there's a difference though because i've been really trying to think about that there's a difference between women who criticize each other in an intersectional way that's destructive and that usually means that they're competing over resources. So there's this w female competition over resources, which is really what Hannah's doing. She's essentially right. saying the pick me girls, the tomboys are getting resources that she deserves because she puts all this effort and probably doesn't even want to uh, into acquiring uh, power over sexual power over men to acquire resources from them. So she's putting all of this extreme, like, she, I don't think if she's, I, I, I'm guessing here, but I don't think that this is what she naturally is. She probably would rather not 
do the makeup, not do all of this other stuff. But she wants this power over men in order to gain resources over them. So she looks at women who don't do that and still get attention. And she says, that's unfair. So that's resource competition. Okay. There is resource competition between women. And that is can be very devastating. And also they'll yank in men and start to develop wars around that. And this is the argument that I get into in the in Twitter. Oh, men make wars. No, actually. If you get it <laughs> right down to it, the reason yeah. why wars happen is because Ma Baker teaches her sons to handle their guns and decides to take your shit. That's why wars happen. Okay. And she tells you to, to come home uh, with your shield or on it. Yeah. Yeah, that's why wars happen. They are resource acquisition enterprises, right? And w women will look at the tribe over there and say, well, they don't deserve their resources for whatever reason. Uh, I so want whatever they have. I want whatever they have, and I want some maidservants. Go and get them. You know, that kind of thing. And that's that's a lot of the dynamic behind the, the Viking raiding. Okay? So oh, yeah. This is the, women's competition over resources is incredibly feral. Now there's a difference between that and criticizing women's behavior because criticizing women's behavior, encouraging their virtue is what builds up resource sharing. You get what I'm saying? What yeah. builds up the process of creating a, a good base for cooperation between men to develop resources. It's Christian women's virtues that created the foundation for a market economy oh um, well you you look at you look at charity right and mm -hmm. and how that used to be kind of the domain of male patrons and female seekers of pa patronage right it was it was women who would go and do all of the organizing and do the bake sales and all of that and they would get the go and get the funding from, I mean, it's like Erin Pitsy, right? She, you know, who, who donated all the money to, for her to open that domestic violence shelter in Chiswick, right? It was all rich men around the town, right? Rich men in the neighborhood. And, uh, so it's, it's like, you know, but then she gets, you know, female volunteers and she's a woman and she organized it and she made it happen and all of that. Right. So you have, you have this symbiosis of, you know, women doing sort of the, 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 the work of the charity, they show that they have something of value to provide. They get the men to contribute money and then they build something out of that. And that's always been women's domain, you know, over at least in the, 20th century and the eight, not 18th, 19th centuries was women doing charity organization and men funding that. Yep. And um, so the, the, the idea is that there's different kinds of, there is, there is men engaging in fighting each other like, I don't know, Gilgamesh before Enkidu, right? Just getting shit from other men and dominating them. And then there's men policing other men's behavior. Do you get the difference? You know, dominate, well, I, men dominating other men to, to get all the women and men policing each other's behavior so that they can create a constructive cooperative society. That's the difference. There are women trying to dominate each other so they can grab up all the resources or construct um, resource graft groups, um, ju self-justifying to grab up all the resources. And then there's women who police each other's behavior so we can all live in an incredibly safe, comfortable society together and hand it to our children, right? Do, do you get the difference? There's a difference. Yeah, no, there. it's, it's you, you look at you look at even the the tale, the epic of Gilgamesh, right? It's it's like, oh, he was an asshole, and then he went through a masculine journey of becoming an actual man, right? He was basically like a stunted teenager and and uh, and and just an absolute jerk, and and then he, and it was not women who took him through this journey; it was Thank another you. man. Yes, it was exactly. Angry. 
Yeah. It's men policing men's behavior for the benefit of those men. And, and it was for the two Gilgamesh's benefit as well as the benefit of the society he was a part of. And it's, there's a difference between women competing with each other over resources and policing each other's be- behavior for the benefit of making sure those resources exist and the benefit of their future ex- life. Like, I mean, yeah. recently, I, I just yesterday and the day before, I responded to a woman who put out a video on why men get dumped. And essentially she was like, I'm just going to do a theoretical to explain why men get dumped. Just imagine this man and this woman, they're in the perfect relationship. It's perfect. It's wonderful. It's they're happy. But then the woman is like, I need you to jump through this hoop. (laughs) And the man tries to jump through the hoop, but then he forgets. And when he forgets, the woman's like, Oh, he doesn't care about me. And, and she reminds him, but then he forgets again because it's, you know, it's hard to s- establish a habit. And now she starts actively finding things to hate him over. Okay. okay? And it's like, yeah, okay. And, and then she says, and this is why men get dumped. And I'm like, so what you did is you sabotaged a good relationship. Yeah, yeah. With hoops. And what happens if he successfully jumps through that hoop? Hedonic adaptation would suggest that you will start to think he doesn't love you again until you set up another hoop. Until he's jumping through so many hoops that he kills himself. Or he yeah. fails to jump through a hoop and then you suddenly decide he doesn't love you. This is a, and I said, this is a you problem. Uh-huh. And, and the thing is that I had women who were like, oh, but I would, uh, uh, and then I did the reversal and they said, oh, that's okay behavior from men. I mean, if you're in a relationship with a man and it's perfect, it's absolutely, and he's like, oh, this is the most wonderful, but you know what? You could really jump through some hoops for me, lady, to prove that you love me. And they were like, yeah, that's, a, that's fine. I would accept that. I'm like, no, you wouldn't. <laughs> what if he asked you to make your sandwich? What if he asked you, okay, I want you to jump through, I want you to make sandwiches. Yeah. Like, like you would lose your fucking shit if you were in a relationship with a man who expected you to jump through hoops to prove your love. Right? Oh my god! You know, like these these people. I don't understand these people with these ideas of relationships, right? Because I've been with been with Mike for like what fourteen years almost now, right? Thirteen mm-hmm. and a half or whatever. And uh, and the other night, you know, he stayed up really late talking on the phone with someone. Uh, I think he came to bed around two and he comes stomping in like a herd of elephants into the bedroom like he always does and because uh, uh, he doesn't know how to walk quietly. So I'm already awake, right? I'm, I'm, he's already woken me up. And then he's like, oh, I need my work phone. And I'm like, then go find your fucking work phone. And so he walks around the house and he's looking for it, looking for it. And, and, uh, And he comes into the bedroom again. He says, I can't find it. Like he's expecting me to get up and look all over the house for his work phone. Like maybe it's in the couch cushions or something, right? And I'm like, I'm like, is it in your pants? And he's like, what? And I was like, is it in your pants? And then he's like, oh. I feel like this is the setup for a joke. He's like, oh, it's in my pants. (laughs) And I'm like, Jesus fucking Christ, sleep with one eye open, right? Like, two in the morning, kid you not, right? He does this shit to me. I do shit like this to him all the time. Not to that degree. Um, but but it's just like, it, it's like, we annoy the fuck out of each other sometimes, right? Yeah. Well, and, it, it, but the thing is that you're not putting up hoops. Like, I can't no. even imagine. It's like, oh, I'm, I'm uh, with my husband, Jonathan. Oh, well, we have a great relationship. We, <laughs> we, 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 we bitch at each other a lot. But you know what I'd really like? I'd really like you to learn ballroom dancing, Jonathan. Yeah, if, you me, if you loved me. If you loved me. Ballroom dancing. Can you imagine? Women would not tolerate. If you loved me, you would make me a sandwich. If you, you guys loved would me. A collapse. If you loved me, you'd buy this lingerie and striptease for me every night like you would like no there's no way you would accept that from a man any kind of if you love me uh hoop jumping and nor should you if you loved me it wouldn't matter that your nose is completely plugged up because you're sick as a dog you'd still suck my dick yeah, it you know like you not and so these women are like oh we, we, we totally it's no there's no double standard I'm like yes there is 
Oh God, you yeah. would not, and, and and nor should you. That's the other thing I said. I wouldn't, <laughs> I wouldn't accept this. Like I, I'm not going to have a, a good relationship with somebody, and then have them. But if you loved me, you jump through these hoops. That's bullshit. That's abusive. No, I'm not going to jump through your fucking hoops. We're either in love or we're not. Okay. Yeah. Um. So the so anyway. So I I said this, and there were some few women who got it, and said, you know. I there was one in particular that he said, you know, I did this with my with with one of my uh, with my current boyfriend or my current view, and I had to learn not to do it because it was destroying my happiness. And I'm thinking, yes, exactly. There are yeah. women who are engaged in a competition over resources, and they're trying to destroy each other because they do not think these other women deserve their resources, those resources. And there are women who are trying to tell you. You got to overcome this shit because it's self-destructive. Not only is it destructive to society, you're not going to have as good a life as you could if you stop doing it. Like, this is the thing. This is the end of the day. This woman had a relationship. If she's describing something that's actually happened to her, she had a relationship in which she was perfectly happy. She was thrilled. It was marvelous. It was perfect. But then she just had to set up that hoop. And say, if you love me, okay? And once he gets through that hoop, guess what she's going to do again? Another hoop. Oh, if you love me. And he, that's going to go until he can't jump through any hoops anymore. He kills himself. And then she's going to be Thor out. Leaves. And she is going to have destroyed a perfectly good relationship for nothing. Who really is hurt by this? Do you really think that I'm hurt by her destroying her relationships and me pointing it out and saying, hey, you're destroying your relationships. Do you think that hurts me? Yeah. Do you think I'm doing that because I hate her? Okay, maybe. Who knows? Maybe I'm that hateful. But at the yeah. end of the day, I'm telling her, hey, you're, you're walking towards a, an open manhole. You might want to stop. Oh, you're just a pick me. You're just, a, how dare you criticize what, oh, ah! See, and my husband, my husband would would tell you all probably right now that I'm an abusive wife because I yelled at him when he paid fifty dollars for an EMF detector. What the hell's an EMF detector? It's a ghost detector. Oh, well, that's actually pretty cool, though. Yeah, but I, I told him. I told him. Okay. I personally don't think this is this EMF detector is going to work to detect ghosts, okay? But even if it does, I don't want to know. Okay. I don't want to know that there's ghosts in Maybe he can use it on my microphone to discover what the hell's going on with it. If there's like, if yeah, it's possessed. I, I don't know, but... If it's possessed yeah, no, I'll mail it to you. Of, I'll mail it to you because it's, ghost it's of one of those... It's one of those gadgets red. that he'll lose interest in with like within two weeks. He's like, well, I can use it for work. And it's like, yeah, you're going to use it for work. Like, give me a freaking break. Ghost detection in the sewer? Well, what? EMF, electromagnetic field detectors, you could use it for, like, uh, all kinds of stuff, right? Yeah. You know, okay. the computer's going haywire. You know? just, I'm, I'm just imagining him, like, sneaking through, like, the, the basement of his workplace. With, yeah, with, like, the, the thing with the, the, the Ghostbusters that goes... Whatever. Yeah, no, and, it, and it's like... And then, then he tells me this morning, as we're leaving for uh, to to get him to work, and uh, he tells me, "Oh, there were ghosts last night." And I'm like, oh, "That's creepy." And I'm like, "What?" And he says, "Well, I I I detected ghosts in the room last night, but this morning they were gone." And I'm like, "Why would you tell me this?" <laughs> Why would you tell me this? You know You're I'm never prone... gonna sleep again. <laughs> you know I'm prone to hallucinations, right? Like I'm prone to um, you know, sort of um, vivid dreams. Uh night terrors and sleep paralysis and stuff like that, right? So like you know that I have a history of this. This is why I've never ever ever touched psychedelics, right? Is because I know, I know well in advance of any of that right shrooms uh dmt whatever mdma anything right i'm any trip i'm gonna have is gonna be really bad right and 
I literally, like, I got up one night uh, recently to go pee, and I'm looking... For the ghosts? ...down the hallway, and the house is dark, and I'm seeing this baby. A baby. And this is just after I'd had a baby raping dream, okay? So, not a baby raping dream where, where adults were raping babies, but where babies were raping each other. Okay, so this is this is my fucked my up mind. My fucking okay? god. Yeah, yeah, no. Literally a one and a half year old baby. Do you want to know what you know, my dreams going are? At it with, Do you want to know? With, with a nine month old baby. And, and I'm looking and there's this baby just kind of leaning up against the piece of furniture and staring at me, okay? And I'm like, that shit ain't real. Okay. Good grief. But it's it's moving, but it's definitely not real. I could just imagine Mike creeping around your bedroom with that EM EMF detector and then just like you're trying to sleep and then he just sort of, he's going on the ground and, and then he just sort of like slides up the side of the bed and I looks at you ya. and says, I think there's a ghost in the room right now. It's kind of a wonder <laughs> that anyone can sleep next to me and still be alive. Ooh, startle response. Okay, can I tell you what my dreams are about? And are I have one said are they no. about babies that rape other babies? No, not in the slightest. I have never had a dream like that. Yeah, no. I'd be, okay, all consider right. Consider yourself lucky. Okay, I, I, I've had dreams, for example, that I'm in like uh, the British Museum, right? And I notice that the walls are being discolored by what I presume is a hidden fire in the walls. Oh. And I'm like looking at this and I'm like, okay, this is not good. We need to do something about it. And a bunch of people come and they argue over whether or not to paint the walls oh, blue or red. Well, that seems useful. Yeah, and I'm like, no, that's not going to fix things. We need, to, we need to actually find the source of the fire. Nobody starts, and then, then floors of the British Museum start to get eaten by the fire that was never addressed. And I'm like screaming, we got to get the fuck out of here. It's too late. And there's a whole bunch of people who are like, no, no, we can we can save it. I'm like, no, you, the, the bottom is on fire. The top will be on fire. We got to get out. And then there's a there's a small amount of people that are like, oh, yeah, you're right. We should probably get out. And we, we like go up the, the 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 endless staircase and then we get onto the roof and we're like and I'm like, OK, well, we got to get off this building. So let's let's construct a bridge to the next uh, uh, roof building. for the next building yeah. and so we're doing that and then the other, the other people who are still in the fire they're like what are you doing you're destroying the building or like we're constructing a bridge to the other building this building is on fire those are the kinds of dreams I have oh no me it's uh, the baby rapers okay we got different yeah. we got, no the we ones that can walk the ones that can walk, they 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 rape the ones that are just crawling because the ones that are just crawling can't get away. You got okay. All right, I gotta twist some arms now. Like let's let's. Uh, I mean, who doesn't want this kind of content, right? Yeah, no, you you do not like. Every time my my husband says, you know, like oh, you know, we can blah, blah and I'm like, you don't want to know what's in my fucking brain. Ah, uh, like okay, yeah. yes. All right, let's. Okay, so once again, we are doing our monthly fundraiser. It hasn't moved at all during the show, so if anybody's out there, five bucks would be great just to know that we're getting a little bit closer. It's peace of mind. Feedthebadger.com slash support. Just put the it in your URL and consider it. Just take the time, pop it in there, please. And um, if we can even just get five bucks, that's a, that's really appreciated. Just so we know that you know it's moving towards the needle, where the needle is moving towards the goal. So once again, that's feedthebadger.com slash support. Just five bucks, guys. And I'll do a thank you. We'll do a shout out. Very much appreciated. And, and where's our super chows? Where's our super chows? No super chows. Feedthebadger.com slash just the tip. Get, get them started. Um, all right. Let's do a little bit more. 
They see other women as competition at best and most of the time as an outright threat. Projection. And usually they end up being very passive aggressive towards other women in that pursuit. Right now, I'm pretty sure all of the women listening are conjuring up versions of the pick me girl they have run into throughout the course of their life. But for the men's who maybe still don't know quite what I'm talking about, let's oh, roll a few examples. Okay, stop. For the men's. Because yeah, yeah. this is all about what the men want. So I'm curious how she's going to try to protect her resource, oh. which is men. Okay. Uh, real quick, I got a super chat from Max Matt, and he sent um, $4.99 and uh, has like a little animated GIF thing. No, actually, it just says one. I think this is first super chat. Your super, yeah, first super chat. So thank you, Max. Matt, uh, you didn't include a message. Uh, if you meant to, just uh, tag Badger Livestreams in the uh, chat because it's, uh, you know. But we appreciate the four ninety nine Again, go to feedthebadger.com forward slash just a tip if you want to send some support uh, that way. It's, it's, it's better for us, but this is still appreciated. Okay. What were you guys going to say about this? Or do you want me to play more? Well, I'm, I'm just curious how she's going to defend her resource, which is men. So let's go. Hi, so nice to meet you. You have filler, right? Right. Okay. Yeah, I, I thought so. Where do you guys? So this is a video. She's It's an example. This is a um, meeting the pick me girl that secretly hates you. So this uh, that's what this is. This is women have like lip filler? Like is this like the thing no, now? No, the pygmies have lip filler is the thing. Well no 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 Oh wait, no, she's the pick me. Wait, wait, and wait. And she's pointing out that the She's playing the pick me. She's doing the thing where women um you this know the they, they, they compliment the you but they they're really like attacking you or whatever. How uh -huh. how women yeah. attack each other, it's passive aggressive. Okay, but that's not that's oh yeah, no, girl. no. I'll, I'll, no well, that 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 is what they're calling a pick me girl. I just, um, I think I was pretty pretty overtly aggressive towards Hannah Cox and the other woman and their filler stuff. Yeah, like yeah. I I was like I'm pretty I'm pretty sure that I just laid it right out there. You guys yeah. are you got while you are incapable. Yeah, while you are incapable of extending good faith, you want sexual power, which is sort of gross. Yeah. Okay, let's... Get your lashes done. Yeah, they're just really fluffy. Um, like a caterpillar almost. You're a natural blonde though, right? You're not, oh my God. Wow, that must be a lot of upkeep. Yeah, wow, this that would just take I have way never too done. long. I mean, if I was you, I'd just be rocking the brunette at this point. I'm so low maintenance. I need you to teach me how to do such heavy makeup. No, I've never done it before. I like wear... Clear what mascara. The hell is this? <laughs> yeah, I like but don't wear any makeup at all. Is, is everything just revolve around the visual for these women? Uh, the, like the closest that I've ever come to saying anything like that was my friend Shari. I was like, those fingernails are not getting anywhere near my cooch. Okay. Because, uh, you know, I was just like, how do you even like, how do you like, uh, help your daughter get dressed with those freaking swords i don't think this is a pick me i think this is the relational aggression that you oh yeah no this is to each other this is this is basically women undermining each other's resources yeah and i'm no, like i know i don't begrudge hannah well, cox the resources this, well this is a pick me i've just never seen one in the wild no, this is not a pick me. That's because I'm pretty sure I get called a pick me, and I very rarely. No, no, no. But this is this is what they're trying to portray as a pick me, right? Is someone trying to undermine other women's ability? I think it's to, yeah. I whatever. think it's just a woman that isn't a part of the sisterhood. I I, no, I don't know. This is a part of the. This, this is one hundred. This is okay. This, this is, is a mean girl. This yeah, is a this mean is a mean girl. girl. She's like a this... really mean fucking girl. And yes, she. If she existed, she would be a pick me. Why would she be a pick me? Well, because she's undermining the other woman and uh, basically presenting herself as the more attractive option. Okay, so because I'm of the low maintenance and blah blah blah, and her lips are fake and blah blah blah, and it's like, 
yeah, okay. So um, if that's the motivation is to get male attention by doing that to other women, right? And it's all passive aggressive and smarmy like that. I can see calling that a pick me, but I, I find it amazing that, you know, they have to find someone, right? The one that they actually opened with, who was an actual, you know, um, that, that, you know, the first, the first woman who was applying makeup, right? Okay. And like, well, she's not going to knock some woman for wearing makeup. She's not going to like criticize some woman for doing her hair nice. She's not going to do any of that. She looked like she was like uh, uh, ready to go out on a date. She was criticizing right? women for being undermining like this. Well, for being shallow. I, okay, and... Again, I just struck. Okay, Hannah Cox, you just showed us a pick me who was criticizing women for for making like I guess being passive aggressive and backstabbing. And now you're showing another woman who's criticizing women for being passive aggressive and backstabbing. Well, well but this woman doesn't exist. Yeah, I know, but my is, point is she's an actor. But my point is, what's wrong with the first woman saying women are being passive aggressive and backstabbing? And then this woman is saying, uh, this is the demonstration of, of being in the presence of a woman who's being passive aggressive and backstabbing. This is okay, but the first woman wasn't. Why? Well, no, she's not saying this is okay. She's no, no, saying... not, no, no. I'm saying the criticism. Like, this woman is criticizing. Oh, yeah, yeah criticizing women for being passive aggressive and backstabby the first woman we saw was criticizing women for being passive aggressive and backstabby yeah and then but the whole the whole idea is that the pick me is passive aggressive and backstabby right so hannah cox is like i hate pick me's they're so passive aggressive and backstabby here let me be passive aggressive and backstabby towards them it's like you know what this is all fucking bullshit. But my point <clears throat> is that the first woman who was presented as the 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 horrible pick me was essentially saying, "I don't want to be around women because they're passive aggressive and back." I don't uh, because they're pick me's. But that but Hannah Cox was presenting <clears throat> her as the pick me. I know. Like what the? I'm, I'm sorry, sorry that, that people, people are so jealous of me, of me. but I, I can't help it that, that I'm popular. popular. Good uh -huh. lord! Like, like. What, okay, but what's the difference? Like, the first woman is like, I don't want to be around you women. You're passive-aggressive and backstabby. This woman is like these... What is it? Because she said women instead of pick -me's? Yeah. Because I, I can so. tell you, there's a lot of women who are like this, apparently. Well, it's, apparently. It's it's like apparently a major freaking problem. It's such a huge problem that Hannah Cox had to make a video about it. Yeah, apparently, but also she has to call out women who say uh, women do this as pick -me's, even though yeah. she's she's a woman calling out women who do this as pick. Like, is is it just all? Is it just like a a, a funhouse mirror of pick -me's? Like, yeah, no, I I'm I'm just like it's infinite regression of pick -me's. Yeah, like, this no, it's is like it's like inception. Yeah, it's it's pick me inception. It's pick me inception. Just call out the behavior. Yeah. You don't have to label it. Women do it more than men for whatever reason. Although there's a lot of men who seem to want to do this now too. Women yeah. do it more than men. It's just shitty behavior that mostly women do. Okay? Yeah. And if you just call out the behavior, you don't have to define a subset. You don't have to define women. Like, you don't have to define a subset of women by this behavior. Just call out the behavior. The behavior is shit. Women mostly do it. It's most the women who, the people who do it are mostly women. The end. Just call out the behavior. It's destructive. So what? Call it out. Police it. That's fine. There's nothing wrong with the first woman who's like, women, you do this. It's true. Women do do this more than men. They do do this more than men. You don't need to scapegoat a particular group of women. Just call out the behavior when you see it. Call it out. Don't do it yourself. Right? Okay? And there is a difference between saying... Uh, trying to undermine a woman's ability to acquire resource and pointing out that what she's doing is destroying the resources. Okay, there's a difference there. The difference is um, fighting over a dress 
versus telling a woman who's lighting fire to the dress factory to stop. All right? Do you see the difference? Well, None of you uh, deserve the resources. You can earn them. But well, it's really true. bad if you're true. destroying them completely. Would it, I don't know. Would, would it make me a horrible pick me if I said I don't want the dress though? It's fine. You cannot want a dress. Like, right. okay, but my, my overall point is this. Like, there's a difference between just saying this behavior is destructive, all right? And trying to destroy another woman because you feel like you you get, you get have the right to the resources that you think that she's accessing, which is what is happening here, right? Okay. Okay. And what does this have to do with the liking men? My, no, that's um, natural. It's oil on my skin. Yeah. Why would I you know. put <gasps> Oh my God. Hi, how are you? Good to see you. You look so dressed up. Uh. Yeah, no, I mean, I just didn't know that tonight was that big of a deal, but hey, I love the enthusiasm. Wait, let me see your nails. Wow, those must take so long. <laughs> I could never, I could never. You must care a lot. The clacking on the screen of those doesn't bother you? Huh. Hey, Brian, just make sure you pause for the banana, but I have no interest in responding to this. Wow. Oh, I'm just looking at my... Maybe I'll just skip to the hand. end of this, because it kind of goes on for a while, and uh, I don't yeah, know, sure. her... Well, let's, let's listen to it, but let's go through oh. it, but I'm just... All right, all right. Yeah, I don't, I don't think right. I could handle it, but brave. Wait, oh my god, I ran into your boyfriend at the grocery store the other day. Had no idea he was hot. Congrats. Good for you. Good What's... for you. Wait, also your hair grew so fast. How... I've never met a woman like this. I, I don't understand. I don't, think, I don't think this woman really exists. Like, especially well, like, know. and has I'm friends. Sure she does, but we just don't meet him because we don't go in those circles. <laughs> yeah. Like, I mean, I'm, I'm already freaking bored. I'm not like, okay, let's get to the meat. Let's get to the philosophy. This is just cattiness uh, you're acting like there is philosophy yeah i don't think it i don't think it's super deep uh, i got a super chow thank you from Yay. david lobby and he gives us uh or david lowboy and gives us five bucks and says um w uh ow my arm allison pick me girls shall receive light duty and extra rations in the sandwich mines so it has been written so let it be done all right <laughs> oh. thank you we appreciate you. it. <laughs> I'm, I'm not going into those sandwiches. I might kill lines. you with my sandwiches, though. I'm not intentionally. I just. How did you I, do that? I'm. All my I'm, sandwiches are for jank. Oh yeah, that's right. So, uh, also, uh, Karen's sandwiches have. Give, give me, me a thank, thank you. you. Give, give me a thank, thank you for feminists for, feminist for getting your, your right to vote. vote. Otherwise, Otherwise, stop voting, voting and, and go, go make, make me a ham sandwich. sandwich. <laughs> perpetuity Karen's Karen's sandwiches must all go to jank as as the one good man the one good walrus he uh, is the okay. one good sea lion yeah, yeah he's the, the 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 alpha buffalo mm. all right let's play more extensions okay I could have sworn I saw a little weft popping out of there <laughs> no no they look great I can't even tell yeah, I mean, like, it just doesn't bother you when you're trying to, like... Oh, oh, I get it, I get it! fingers to it's your hair. Oh, I just get it, I get it. I get why this is fascinating. It's MMA for women. Yeah. That's what this is. Like, they're, they are actually engaging in all kinds of maneuvers to try to out-compete out, uh, out each other. And it, it, it needs the Mortal Kombat theme over the top of yeah, it. That's that's why you can't tell because it doesn't have Yeah, well all, all I, all I is, I don't how women can deal with those nails and I don't understand how women can handle hair extensions. Uh, if I if I can't if I can't brush through my entire head of hair all the way down to the scalp, right? If there's like chunks with glue, gluing the hair extensions on, yeah, no, I, I just, I, I, it would drive me crazy. It would make yeah. me nuts. You know, I'm just obsessive that way. I'm sorry. Can I, can I just tell a little, a quick little story? When I was in my mid twenties, I think it was like 26, and I worked in the Sears Tower, now called the Willis Tower, downtown Chicago, 
And there was this girl, she was a, um, a secretary in one of the offices, and I worked in a gift shop, and I thought she was just like, a, you know, the bomb. Like, she was just so attractive to me, and I and she liked me, I could tell. So I asked her on the date once, we went and watched Memento. This is when the movie just came out, you know, the Memento with, uh, by Christopher Nolan, right? A kind of a, kind of cerebral movie, if you've never seen it. And after the movie's over, I'm like trying to talk to her about it. And she had like no hobbies, no nothing. She lived with her dog. She didn't understand the movie. I'm like, oh, I thought it was pretty good. And I'm like talking about like, you know, the way that it was filmed and everything. And she's like, I didn't get it. And then and then we're like on the way, I'm, I'm taking her to her place. Um, and I realize, or I notice, because her hair is really long on this date. And I'm like, well, oh, your hair's a lot longer than... Then I remember when I saw you in the store and she was like, oh, well, you know, it, at first she didn't say anything. And then she kind of said, well, I have extensions. And my my first thought was, well, I said to her, I said, why did you do that? <laughs> and she never she never went out with me again. <laughs> like, I didn't think I did anything wrong, but it's just funny. Like, guys, we don't care about that. Like, I'm, I'm sorry, but we don't. Like, it was weird that I, I thought, I'm like, why are you getting extensions? Like, in... You know, I live in it. I lived in the west side of Chicago. I grew up around a lot of black people and black women get weaves and extensions put in all the time. And they act like men impose this on them when I know for sure most of us are just like, why don't you just wear your hair natural? Like when I went to college, there was a girl that I went to school with. She was from Ghana and she was gorgeous. And her hair was all she had like a, you know, like an Afro ponytail thing. And I was like, yeah, that's a beautiful woman right there. Like, I didn't understand it, but it's just weird because this whole conversation that this whole pick me thing that's happening, men have nothing to do with this, but men will be to blame for this. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, no. Well, and you look at you look at um, the, uh, you know, like the the Jamaican, most mostly women, um, mostly Jamaican um, people who, who work at my local run my local liquor store and uh, one uh she just basically buzzes her head and wears wigs and it's a bunch of sisters and like siblings and nieces and stuff right who work there and nephews and uh and the other she gets braids every once in a while and and then the niece gets uh she has braids sometimes she you know pulls a whoopee and and we use some, you know, uh, other color through them, right? And it's like, I always thought, you know, that would be handy, right? Like, that would be, I mean, you just get up. There's no way you could have bedhead, mm -hmm. right? But, um, but it's like, I, I, okay, that, that, that's, that's fine. But, um, the men are just, uh, they just, do the standard fro, except for the Hindu Jamaican one, <clears throat> who, you know, uh, who has like long, almost completely white hair. That you know, is uh, is always a mess. Okay, so what what is in, there's something that occurred to me while you were first of all, I just want to do a shout out, Brian. You were the one who said that social media is like Call of Duty for women. Yeah. Um, yeah, yes, no, it no, is. No. It's on. It's online multiplayer for this women. Is, yeah. This is MM. Uh, this is MMA. It's like Mortal Kombat. You know what they need to do? They need to give rules and like a point scoring system, and then men will really get into this. Yeah. They'll be like, pull, pull her extensions. Oh, mention, mention the new, yeah, yeah. new. Uh, <clears throat> go, yo, get, get her be in like, the girdle. Uh, how, how do you do that when? Um, how do you do that when you're getting frisky with with your date? You know, like doesn't this hand gets stuck on those extensions like um, how does that even work yeah i see you've got a new you've got a new uh, plastic surgeon very very good work excellent oh, mm, yeah. Mm, yeah okay but but i'm telling you this is how this is how these women will get more men's interest you gotta make this a sport you, yeah and you got some great material here because that once i realized that i totally got more interested but it needs to have a point scoring system every once kind of... in a while it needs to descend into like fists and fisticuffs and hair pulling yes the, yeah a little <laughs> bit more action would would help it quite a bit mm -hmm. just mm -hmm. a little bit 
Um, yeah. And but uh, I'm telling you, point scoring system and referees. That's what you need. Make it yeah, a sport. You need, you need you need like a, an entire board full of stats. Yeah. That, yeah. Exactly. You need to have like fantasy dream team. league. Fantasy you know? league. Pick me. Oh yeah. Yeah. Come on. That's 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 a million dollar idea idea right there. I think it million is dollars. actually. Yeah. But my, but what point that. I wanted to make. It's like that, bum fights, but. Yeah, <laughs> bum fights, but with with women but the the overall point that i wanted to make was um again I, oh actually let me let me let me frame it like this so when this woman that you went out with who you thought was really hot started to reveal the fact that there was nothing there did she retain that attractiveness to you i mean i mean she was still really hot like <laughs> but yeah. i was 26 allison i wasn't thinking with my brain but um, but yeah, I mean, I, I, I was, I thought I blame myself cause I thought, well, I shouldn't have, I shouldn't have pride. I should have allowed the mystery, you know, about her hair because I called it out and I didn't realize it. You know what I mean? Like I was just kind of innocent. I was like, Oh, why, why did you, why are your hair so long? And she was like, Oh, well, it's an extension. And I'm like, why did you get extensions? Why would you do that? I, I don't need you to do that. It's kind of like when guys say, well, you know, like um you know you don't have to wear a lot of makeup and, and i think they mean it they're they're being really practical like you know we wonder is that even good for your skin or whatever and then women get upset because they're like you're not supposed to notice that i'm wearing makeup it's like that like you're not supposed to see through the veil and it's like no it's obvious like your neck is like three three shades darker than your face <laughs> so, before you start karen let me just i think part of the problem that we're having here is first of all, I don't see a lot of connection between this and the definition of pick me. And I think what is actually happening is that the pick me's, the, the, based on the definition, are women who simply just go with whatever God gave them in ter terms of their looks and then focus on other things like hobbies, virtues, whatever else, right? And this is, for some reason, that has been conflated with this which is yeah, no, I, honestly like, this is not this is not that behavior because they're just well, they're just most of the women who are more masculine are just living with whatever god gave them in, in terms of looks and focusing on other aspects of themselves to build up well this you, sounds you, like look, the behavior of women who exclusively focus on looks yeah well you see look, what I'm saying? Look, at, look at this woman I mean, she's like beautifully made up and she's like wearing a really nice dress and, you know, and all of that. And it's like, yeah, I wouldn't go out like that. I yeah. feel like I was in a costume. Yeah. And I would, I would not look good. So I wouldn't do it, but you know, it's, and, and a lot of it, this is interesting because when I criticized women's behavior and not, not like, I'm not saying that I don't necessarily fall into some of the things that I'm criticizing. Yes. I have seen myself do shitty things like put up hoops and then I have to go and I have to slap myself. Don't do that. And, but when we're criticizing the behavior, if you overcome the behavior, you're going to have a better life. I don't think this, what these women are in their criticism are giving you anything that's going to make your life better at the end of the day. They're simply trying to destroy your access to resources. You see the difference? Mm -hmm. Like when we criticize women, if you actually listened to the criticism that we're saying, if you listen to, here's the things that concern men, you know, have some consideration, have some compassion, you know, develop these other things, develop the virtues, the extension mm -hmm. of compassion, develop your discipline, develop your, your, your contentment and gratitude, develop your humility to a certain degree because some of us aren't very human don't have a lot of that but you know whatever what yeah. to what degree you can are you right? are you aiming that is that a jab at me <laughs> i'm such a pick me <laughs> oh no, I'm, okay it's fine you're charming okay i have I, a, I have a big ego too and i know yeah. that all right but but overall like develop these virtues and these are long-term self-interest. This is this is how you develop long-term self-interest, you know, and you will have a better life. You know, and it's not about trying to destroy your resources. It's about trying to impart the information so that you can best preserve those resources and enjoy them into your old age. 
You know, there's a big difference between that and tearing each other apart like this. And, well, um, and the, the, the horrible thing is, is that you will get old. Mm -hmm. Right? All of this is going to go away at some point. You're going to end up looking like, um, you know, uh, you're probably not going to age like uh, Ellen Mirren. Or no. Her name, Ellen Mirren. Or um, like some of the older, like classical actresses. Yeah, you're, you're probably not going to age like Have you ever Michelle seen Welsh. Um, oh, I gotta find out that, that actress's name. But yeah, you're probably not. And uh, you, you, the more you pick at yourself, the worse you'll age, to be honest. Yeah, the, the, the moment you go through menopause, you're probably going to lose 30% of your collagen. Mm. Mm. Yeah, that's a, uh, but, but my overall point is, yeah, it's all waiting for us in the end. It's, this is what I found funny because people were like, oh, you're old and blah. And I'm like, well, yeah, soon you're going to be my age. Yeah. Eventually, what are you yeah. going to have? Like, oh, I, I what have an insult. 20... I'm old. I survived for like 53 yeah, years. Yeah, like someone, some woman was like, yeah, well, you should put some makeup on. It could take the years off. And I said, well, why would I take my years off? I earned them. Um, the uh... well, Why would I take my years off? The only man that I want to have anything really to do with is perfectly happy with the way I look. Yeah. And I, I actually went to my husband. And I said, all these people are like insulting me. And he's like, well, they fuck them. You're, you're beautiful yeah. to me. There you go. Yeah. There it's you one go. one of those weird things, right? Like, they've done studies on it. Uh, on on people who, like, fell in love when they were young and then met each other when they were significantly older, like 20, 30, 40 years later, right? And the feelings are still there. The attraction is still there. Um, they, they still... That you ask them and they say, no, no, she looks exactly like the day I met her. Like, it, it's the weirdest thing, right? And, and it's I, it's a mental trick. It's something in the brain, not in the eyes, but um, even my dad, you know, like when, you know, my parents had one of those uh, photo frames that would just like scroll through all the different family photos and stuff. And whenever a picture would come up of my mom, and it didn't matter what age she was, right? She could be like when he, right after they met, you know, or before they met, or, you know, when she was 50, when she was 60, when she was 80, right? Um, he would just start talking about, you know, how when he met her the, on that first blind date, right? He took one look at her and said, that's the woman I'm going to marry She's like Elizabeth Taylor and uh, Audrey Hepburn just in one woman. And uh, and that's that's what I'm going to do with my life. And yeah. and he would he he just he absolutely adore her. And they picked at each other and bickered with each other the way I do with my husband, too. Right. But uh, she would like stomp around and threaten to divorce him when he was like being when he's like smoking or whatever, she'd catch him smoking. Ah, I swear I'm going to divorce you. And he'd put his hands together and look up at God and pray, please let her be, please let her mean it this time. But, you know, yeah, they, it's, they really uh, love each other. Um, yes. And like, uh, I'm, 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 she, she's calling me old. Well, I mean, I have a 26 year relationship now, probably older than you're alive. Um, and, I'm not planning to leave him, so, mm -hmm. you know, like, uh, and he's not planning to leave you. And it's like, yeah, no, yeah, I we built a to... life together. And that's, that's, that's what you do. Yeah. And if you want to, if you want to be actually beautiful, even when you're old, that's what you do. You don't play these shitty games. You listen to people who have long-term relationships on the kind of mentality that they need to maintain them. And that is completely different than trying to undermine another woman's access to her resources. Okay. If you listen to me, you're not going to have, maybe it feels bad initially because I'm criticizing some aspect of your behavior. You know, maybe that feels bad. But at the end of the day, if you overcome whatever it is that's making you behave in this way, you're going to have a better life. Whereas if you succumb to what these women are saying, 
it's just a permanent hit to your self-esteem. That's it. Does that make sense? Like, there's a difference there. Well, it's, you know, like, honestly, these women should be, like, worried less about competing with each other. Mm -hmm. uh, a little bit worried more about securing a man who's a long-term prospect. Yes. Who actually does have the potential of staying with you forever. And yes. you age together. And... You know, and so you're looking at his midsection expanding and uh, and his hair going gray and he's looking at, you know, the same with you and uh, and y you're you're OK with that because you're not on the market. Mm -hmm. Well, we also neither of you are on together. the market. Neither of you really have to worry about any of that. And. So it's just like, I'm I'm thinking like if if I had to start dating now, I just wouldn't do it. Okay, this is this is ultimately it. Don't let intersectional female intersectional competition ruin your life. And this is what's happening here. And the yeah. thing is that Hannah Cox is still engaging in it. Yeah. Okay, let's keep I just, going. I just find it hilarious that. that oh wait, she, I have some. Like, thank you. Uh, she calls the woman calling out the pickneys a pickney. Yeah, well, she calls the woman calling out this behavior a pick me. Yeah, yeah. And, and then she calls. Ugh, yeah. I, I'm finding it very difficult to follow her logic because I suspect there is none. Yeah. All right, I got some thank yous. So I want to do a big thank you to Cry. Uh, I'll just say Cry, K R Y, who gives us a $30 subscription. So thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Come again. again. Woo! That's that's very appreciated. It's we've had a, uh, some a lowering of subscription revenue lately, so anything that brings that back up is really appreciated. Um, that takes a weight off my mind to make sure that we have that some at least some monthly income coming in. All right. So the next one I want to thank is Power of Seven. Hopefully not your legal name. Who gives us ten bucks? Thank you, Power of Seven. Let me just get this straight. straight. You're, You're saying, saying that we should organize our societies. societies. Along the lines of the lobsters. lobsters. <laughs> yes, that's exactly what he said. The crustacean, the Tao of the crustacean. Okay, and I want to thank Shula, Shulagaga for $50. Thank you, Shulagaga. Come on, deal that! <laughs> All right, so we have, uh, where are we at? We have 1,830 left to go, which is actually pretty good for seven days remaining. I really appreciate everybody putting it in early. Like, that's a weight off of my mind. I think it might also be a weight off of Brian's mind, but I know I'm a lot more nervous than Brian and, and frenetic. So, uh, yeah, thank you so much. Just very appreciated. And again, thank you for the, the ongoing support. Don't, uh, don't think that the ongoing support isn't appreciated. It, I know I don't call it out as much because... Uh, the, the fundraiser people really get a lot of the attention, but it is. It, it's good to know that you're giving every month and uh, and that we have that to rely on. All right. So thank you all. And if you'd like to support, go to feedthebadger.com slash support. And if you'd like to send us a message, feedthebadger.com slash just the tip. All right, Brian. All right. A couple things before we continue. Firstly, I got a couple super chows and super chats. But also, don't you have to go to the Twitter spaces soon? Yeah, probably. I'll, I'll see what they say. Um, All right. Well, let me read the Super Chows and Super Chats, and then I guess we'll decide what's happening next. So, uh, Great Indoors. I'm sorry, I can't display it now because uh, the, the chat has disappeared. Uh, gives us $5 and says, Brian, at this point, I don't know what a pick-me girl is anymore. It's all very confusing. Can you tell me about your dreams instead? I... I don't really have dreams. Uh, he wants to know if you have any baby rapers in your dreams. No, I don't have any I don't have any dreams like that. I think the last time I had a dream it was um I was in school and graduating. It was very boring. Um yeah, the Dr. Carlson one where he's like not, he's yeah, that's really <laughs> getting in there and then he's like, Oh my god, this is amazing and then he's like ha, 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 ha. Yeah. <laughs> Looking right into the camera and I'm like, What the fuck? And then I got a super chow from the one good man. I can't display 
And he gives us five bucks and says, what's the difference between a shopping trolley and a male feminist? A shopping trolley has a mind of its own. Thank you for that. Ooh. Very funny. And then I got a couple super chats. Uh, Albert Nader Retro gives us three super chats. I'm just going to read the amounts and then read through them all. Uh, one for $2 Canadian, one for $5 Canadian, and one for $2 Canadian. Um, and he says, this is basic chick on chick aggression, Brian. Yes, I know. I know what that looks like. Um, Albert Nada then gives and then says, only one Allison MMA has rules and combatants generally do have respect for each other. More like pro wrestling, talking to talking to build a died. Oh. Shit talking to build a died. Okay. Uh, yeah, I, I think this uh, online like social media aggression between women, it, there should be a referee of some kind, but I don't know. Uh, and then yeah, and then Albert it, says it, it that is, should have read only one problem. Yeah. Okay. It. So. Sorry. That's all of the. I've read through them all. I'm done with okay. that. Okay. Right. Let's play some more of the video. I guess. Oh, I got another super chow because Richard Bier likes to wait till the last second. Gives us five bucks and says a lot of these women seem to be in a state of arrested development and somehow they don't realize that they will visibly age at all. They do seem to be perpetually in their high school mindset. Too bad there isn't any of these types of women giving their life perspective in their nursing home years and now it is working and how it is working out for them. But women wouldn't listen to the advice from other women anyway, would they? I mean, some probably will, well, but... Uh, like, why would you listen to the advice of some old bitch? She's old and ugly. Yeah, exactly. What the hell? Like, that's the thing. Like, you guys are going to end up in that position. Yeah, you're going to you be gotta old You got to look at that. You're going to be old and ugly. Like, you, this is very, very fleeting. Very fleeting. Like, if you're, if you're 50 and you dress like that, right, everybody's going to look at you like, uh, bitch, you're trying too hard. Like You're going to be a try hard. Act, act your age, right? Are we like, doing more or are we, we calling it? <clears throat> okay, what do you have to do? Well, I'm trying to figure out what's going on because they're – they're still sort of dicking around. I'm, you know, like these things are sort of informal. So I imagine that oh. it might be a while before they start. Um, and, you know, it'll probably take a while to get everybody revved up, I suppose. Oh. All right. So now I get, I'm going to play the video, okay? Yeah. yeah. Yes. You're like your boyfriend or something like that. Like when he's trying to, it doesn't bother you. Okay. Cool. None of this Probably is going to... Lizzie, why are you putting that makeup? Has... Are you trying to impress the boys in the middle of my class? You guys see that? She's trying to impress you. So, did any of you boys see me at the football game last night? I know you did because you were playing extra hard. Uh, uh, uh sit back. Okay, what the fuck? You, you're going to oh. focus on the fact that she's engaging in intersexual competition when the fact that she is grooming boys might be the more important thing to focus on? Uh, it... That's inappropriate. Yeah. It, yeah, clearly inappropriate. And I think she kind of acknowledges it, but doesn't. But it's still men's fault well, if we no, keep going. But does this even exist? Yeah, probably no. it does. But it's like well, I'm, honestly, Karen, you don't. Not well, like you don't. This. You don't. You don't go in these circles. I guarantee it. So I'm sure that they are actually being honest about the women that they're seeing. But the other thing is that all of this. All of this is irrelevant to your long-term well-being. This is just you guys fighting over resources and not developing the virtues to actually maintain those resources long-term over your lifetime. Like well, these, these, these are women who look at things the way a lot of... And this is the criticism that I have about millennials and Zoomers and stuff. And they're like, oh, I'll never be able to afford to buy a house. Yeah, how about this? Buy a shitty house like I did. How about that? Like, you don't need no 2,500 square foot freaking pseudo man McMansion, right? With a perfectly landscaped yard, right? Do what my parents did. Do what I did. You know, buy some crappy thing and fix it up, right? That That's what you do when you don't have money, right? And maybe, maybe... Uh, buy a used car and buy it cash, okay? Don't get out, take out a car loan on a new car, right? Use your credit cards. Absolutely, use them for groceries. Pay them down to zero every month. You'd be amazed at how that helps your credit rating. 
right? You're going to have the most perfect credit score. You're going to get like the, the kind of interest rate that I can get, right? If you do that, right? If you actually look into the future and plan for it, my kids all have savings. My kids have freaking tax-free savings accounts. They all have savings. They all have uh, like regular savings accounts. They, they all live independently. None of them have great jobs, right? They could buy a house. Right? The youngest is 21. He's about five years away from being able to, to buy a house. He works at Walmart. Like, I'm sorry, but like, lower your expectations. Right? And this, this is, this drives me crazy with, with all of the, oh yeah, no, no, you have to, oh, I have to, how much money are you spending on makeup? How much money are you spending on your hair? How much money are you spending on your nails? Right? And how much money are you putting in the bank? Right? And all of this shit, and it's all about having the flash. It's all about having the attractiveness right now. And no thought to the future. No thought to who you want to grow old with. Right? Because that person is going to eventually look like that pair of slippers that got lost under the bed and has been lying there collecting dust and dog hair for like 25 years. That's what that person is going to look like someday. Right? It's not you're even... not going to be able to find a new freaking Brad Pitt when you're 55 years old. It's not going to nope. happen. It's not going to happen. But here's the thing. This isn't even... Like this they're is blowing. Goes they're blowing their whole fucking wad, right? All of their value on like competition with each other. That's yeah. the thing. It's not yeah, even. No. It's not even a competition over men. It's competition with each other. Yeah. And then they're they're well, they're men like do it too, right? And but, then you know, I know but, do that. But then they're they pick smart. one. And then they're they pick smart. one. Yeah, but they're smart. Okay. We got this guy, he, he's like the son of the owner of like one of the very successful rest, family-owned restaurants in, in the neighborhood, right? And, well, you know, he works there uh, several nights a week, and, and he wears nice shoes, and he wears nice clothes, and, and uh, sometimes he's driving a Lamborghini, and sometimes he's driving some other freaking car, I don't even know. Right, and everybody walks through uh, the parking lot, and they're like, "Oh my god, that car!" Right, everybody admires it because, like, you know, it's an admir it's it's something to look at, right? Like, it's it's amazing, right? Yeah, he rents those. Mm. He rents them. He doesn't but buy them. What what this is is like they're so obsessed with this competition with other women. It's almost yeah. like Gilgamesh obsessed with this competition with other men to the destruction of everything. Yeah. And she, they are so obsessed with this competition with other women that they are failing to develop the skills necessary to have a long-term relationship. They yeah, think everything and, and they don't about, have any kind of future mindset either. Everything is about attracting a man because that's the point scoring system that they're interested in. Yeah. So, okay, okay, but about you know keeping a man. Yeah, but anyway, it feels like we're getting out sort of a window into a world that we're not necessarily part of. So Maybe just keep going. Oh. I continue. I just okay. don't know why. I just don't know why Tomboy's got lumped into this because I don't see this as tomboy behavior. No. Tomboy. Hey on, girls, usually you're not allowed to use like... the bathroom. You had five minutes to go before my class started. So does anyone want to sit by Miss Jackson's desk today? Of course you do, Jessica. You're becoming a teacher's pet. How about we give someone like Aiden a chance instead? Why do you boys keep asking me to go to the bathroom? You don't have to ask for my permission. I'm not your mommy. Ashley, stop putting on lip gloss. It's not like anybody's going to kiss you, you right now. Are you fucking kidding me? They're complaining about female teachers that pr have preference for the boys? Like, it does that even happen very often? I don't think it does. No, it doesn't. Statistically, yeah, no, only only if the female teacher is a freaking pedo. Yeah, like, what are you saying? <coughs> oh my god, I can't believe that. Or, can you imagine, like, men doing this and they're like, oh, uh, Mr. Sticky Fingers really likes the girls. I, I can't yeah. believe he's such a pick-me man. Like, mm. I'm sorry, this is a predator. You're describing yeah. a predator. Weird. 
Yeah, okay. it's really uh, You're thing at actually, school. Any of you boys yeah. want to taste this? It's vanilla cake flavor, and I know that's Are your you favorite. Are you fucking kidding? No, I don't mean kiss me. I mean, like, taste it like I'll put some on your lips. Oh, the women are the teacher one. of female. Okay. Go ahead. And that's a real thing, according to, uh, you know, well, like, okay. I, well, you know these predators. There are, there are women who, who do prey on school-aged boys, on their students, right? But they don't act like that oh, in we, class, in I'm, front of everybody. You don't know that. It could be true. But I'm, my point is that why is the emphasis on the fact that she's competing with the girls when she's sexually abusing the boys are you fucking mental okay what is what is her response one triggered me y'all i only went to public school for about two years at the end of high school and the number of teachers i had who acted like that is just inexcusable like why are you flirting what? with your students <sighs> i think every woman has had to deal with this prototype from time to time and if I'm being honest, we've also probably all been this prototype at okay, least stop. occasionally. And stop. Lady. She You're had insane. an exorbitant number of teachers, of female teachers, who acted like that. Okay, were you part of Pedophile High? Yeah, no, like, because I had, I have, I have a 29-year-old, a 28-year-old, and a 21-year-old, and they all went to school. Right? And, uh, uh, none of the male teachers were acting that way towards my daughter, and none of the female teachers were acting that way towards my sons. And my sons were both tall and attractive. Okay. So was my daughter, right? Like it's it's like, um. Okay, I, I you know what the veracity of this isn't the point. Let's just give her <sighs> that this is an accurate reflection of reality. Let's just give it to her. Uh, Your takeaway is that these sexual predators were competing sexually with you. With you. Are you fucking mental? Like that's like a man saying, Well, I just think rapists. They just they just they just they did they outcompete me. What what that's unfair. Like I mean, yeah, no, has that guy raped like twenty has women. Anybody, and has anybody considered like the leave some for the rest of us? You know, has anybody considered the effect? of rapists, serial rapists, on men's ability to get sex? Like, really, <laughs> we need to talk about the real issues here. Are you fucking mental? Oh, God. Um, is that's the only thing she says, Brian? Like, this is insane. Well, okay, okay, you know, okay, no, no. I will call you on that, Allison. When you look at people like uh, the, the, obje the male objections to people like Andrew Tate and pickup artists and stuff, a lot of it is, you know, a complaint about the 80 20 rule right and that these men are monopolizing the sexual marketplace so there is that and let's I'm say you saying, have been lucky enough wait, to not wait, run into wait. a woman who behaves this way towards other women you have still seen the effects of this mentality in the culture i listen yeah, to a on... really good podcast the sexual abuse of boys, lady. Like, uh, you're not going to get me off of this now. Like, you you, 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 you parade a, ma a female pedo, or uh, even if she's in a pedo, okay, let's say they're over the age of 13, so they're pre post prepubescent. She's still a predator. You, yeah. you, you parade a female sexual predator and you say, but what about her effect on all of the other ladies? No, I don't give a fuck. You're adults. Yeah. You deal with it. You're not the ones being raped, okay? Yeah. I think the important issue here is that as a sexual predator of young men and maybe she should be stopped because of that not because she makes you feel jealous when you were like 15. <laughs> like what wh priorities yeah like what lord right out the gate you just fail podcast episode a few months ago is called the big hit show and it has a few seasons now but the first one deals with twilight and the phenomenon around the movie franchise even though it was massively ridiculously commercially successful it was still looked down upon and seen as something that was embarrassing to be shown out in public liking or appreciating and actually they trace this back through decades of pop culture and they look at many of the largest commercial successes throughout okay, history 
Okay, okay. Twilight? Okay, because I was on oh. all of the romance uh, writers uh, forums and stuff when that came out. Okay, so, I Karen, was... I just got to interrupt you. Announcement. Uh, apparently, I got the day wrong. The X space is happening tomorrow, so. Okay. Okay, keep all going. All right, what I'm saying is, okay, I was online dealing with all of these freaking rabid feminists when Twilight came out, and what was the number one complaint about Twilight from... Anyone involved in the slightly feministy uh, romance, erotica, you know, genre of writing, you know, and anything that even remotely was feministy. Uh, the dude was a stalker, right? And she was a damsel, oh, right? Okay, and so I'm therefore, guessing... it was embarrassing to like it because it was so Not misogynistic. Enough. So we're about weird, to weird. It was. Uh, we're about to go into a the feminism of yesteryear is totally patriarchy now. Okay. Yeah. All right. Feel free. To okay, play I'll play. Anything. I'll play more of this. Things like Elvis, the Beatles, the boy bands of the 1990s, Britney Spears, Justin Bieber. And the common thread throughout all of these is that females were the original fan base. Females got really excited about these pieces of art or cultural contributions. And because of that, they usually didn't really get respect right away, even though they were unquestionably all really great in their own right and very talented. And uh, again, just pause. so I think what she's getting at is oh, that uh, oh, women like things that women enjoyed are frowned on. They're seen as lesser they're, because you kidding me? I think that's what she's getting at. But let's yeah. are you let's keep going. Like when when men have things that are being presented as making them more beady and rapey. Like, are we going to compare this? Like the stigmatization, yeah. at least at least women's things are are presented as innocuous. Not you know, what I say at least that shouldn't be the case. Because you just presented that female predator as being, you know, the most important thing is sort of an innocuous jealousy that you had. Uh, yeah, yeah, that's the way it happens with women. A lot of your stuff is considered innocuous when it shouldn't be. So the the harm of that is it's not taken seriously when it should be. Well, and 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 look at look at Twilight again. Look at like the the big complaint uh, as to why Twilight sucked right and and people who who liked the movie and the books were like bad and wrong is because it was it showed a uh horrible patriarchal relationship between a domineering man who was stalkerish and a submissive woman who basically centered her entire life around him right and uh and I'm, I'm just like, I wasn't interested in the book or the movie or, or the uh, fanfic Fifty Shades of Grey that was based on Twilight. Not interested. Um, and, uh, but it, it's like, you look at the complaints, You like you said, Allison, the feminism of yesteryear is the patriarchy of today, right? So if you were a woman and you liked it, you were bad and wrong. If you were a man and you liked it, you were extra bad and wrong because, hey, you know, you must be a rapey raper, uh, maybe even a baby raper. Um, if you freaking liked Twilight, which was very, you know, uh, male dominant and, you know, the woman was so, the young girl was so submissive and, you know, and, and all, and he was so stalkerish and he would like break into her house and watch her while she slept and, you know, and it's like, it's so creepy. And now it's like, you're not allowed to not like it because I guess, because it stood the test of time for women's tastes. Like, I, I don't, how, the internal incoherence and inconsistency of feminism is, Ugh. Okay, I I can't. Next level. Okay, next level doesn't even like we need another word for that. 
just like you know the Afghanistan withdrawal, uh, we need a new word for botched, right? Okay, we need a new word for next level when it comes to this shit. All right, let's continue. And even though as they progressed in their careers, the culture at large came to appreciate them. But oftentimes when something is attributed to being inherently female or liked by females, it's looked down upon. Most recently, we've seen this with the Taylor Swift phenomenon, where she is undoubtedly the biggest female star on the planet and means a lot to millions and millions of women who identify with her lyrics. On top of being a human... Oh, you mean the fact that Taylor Swift just shits on men for entire albums at a time and women relate to it a lot? It's an issue because men are not really a fan of this kind of like anti-male sentiment that's coming out. I wonder, you know, that reminds me of another product that came out last year that was extremely popular with women that made over a billion dollars and yet the message was, fuck men, it's hard to be a woman. I wonder if there's a theme here that pushes men away from these things. And yet somehow this is still men's fault, even though it's really just women mad at everything, despite living in the most free, the most secure, and the most like technologically advanced time in our entire history of our species. But there's that. still shit to complain about, especially because men aren't complaining with us. We had a beautiful relationship. He was so wonderful. It was great. But then... I just felt like I had to create a hoop for him to jump through. <laughs> That's well, it. Yeah, yeah. Well, and uh, uh, oh, let's go. Let's do the some Taylor more. Taylor Swift thing. I I listen to CBC Radio in the car, right? Because I like to keep an eye on what the crazies are up to. Okay. And my condolences. Uh, yeah, no, and there's this uh, there's this host um, on the Edmonton AM morning show, right, Min Dariwal, right, and he is uh, he's he's East Indian, no accent, but he's he's a big Swifty, he's a huge Swifty, and uh, and all of the hosts on CBC are like big Taylor Swift fans, and I'm like, really, even Rod Kurtz or whatever his name is, who's like uh, completely gray. He's, he's a big Taylor Swift fan. Like, uh, I'm sorry, but I don't know if I'm buying it. And if I am buying it, uh, then this Hannah Cox bitch, uh, she needs to, like, Taylor Swift is a billionaire. And yes, her songs are a little catchy. At least the ones that I've heard that I can identify with her. The Shake It Off one, you know, eh, it's a little catchy. Okay. But it, it's like eh, $27,000 for a freaking ticker, ticket to a Taylor Swift concert? Right? This is why you freaking women can't find men willing to bet on you for life. Like, I'm mad at my husband for buying a $50 ghost detector. Are you mad because it's a $50 ghost detector or because he detected ghosts in the in the middle of the night? No, I'm mad because he spent $50 on nothing. Right? Yeah, on, on, but like, he's some enjoying himself. On toy that he's going to play with for a few days and, and like, try and creep me out. And and then, then he's going to, it's going to sit gathering dust in a drawer. Yeah, that can be annoying. All right, let's yeah. let's listen to some more annoyance. Humongous commercial success who literally has the ability to move the economy with her tour. She also seems to be a very good person. She's very involved in charity. She conducts herself with grace. She's never seen acting out or being a mess. She's a very... Whoa, wait, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. On every yeah, like she can't, she can't keep a man to, to save her life. She endorses Joe Biden. She thinks everything should be free. Like, what? Are you a libertarian? Are you seriously saying this? Every time she loses another relationship, right? Every time she like tanks one, right? Okay. She she writes an entire album, fucking shitting on the guy, right? Oh, she's never. Oh yeah, but like by extension, shitting on all men. 
Yeah, like it's it's obviously yeah. everyone else's fault. No, she's so wholesome. Yeah, I'm sorry if you turn her in. If she if you changed her to a man, and it sounds like the most depra deranged incel possible, I don't think she's particularly wholesome. I don't know. Is that is that true? I'm not particularly into not I mean, not just that. It's I just it's know. just it's nuts because. She's absolutely, like, Taylor Swift is absolutely a statist. <laughs> and this woman is supposed to be anti-statist. And she's over here defending her because she's a woman. That's it. Well, it's all about the sisterhood. Well, I don't understand. Well, okay, she, okay. I'm like, well, how does Taylor Swift need defending? Yeah, that's, like, that's a good point. The, she's worth more than a billion fucking dollars. She's dating some freaking... She's one of the good billionaires, player. though. Okay, She's dating but... some fucking football player, right? NFL player who who like uh, didn't they just win the freaking Super Bowl or like the World Cup or the like Stanley Cup or something, right? Like she's. I'm she's trying to remember like, how we got on the topic of Taylor Swift because it feels like we're in a. Because this bitch brought her up. She she brought up Taylor Swift as a good example. Let me explain. Let me explain. Okay. She brought up Taylor Swift as an example of something that women. Are, are drawn to something popular with women that men are not drawn to okay, and that so this why? is the reason for intersexual competition between women and pick me behavior this which real i think point. she's getting at the point that because men don't give it the same amount of i don't know support that they do to the beatles um, then it's the, because of that, it's, it's men's know. fault. Something like that. Were like insanely popular. Okay. But Beatlemania was all about women throwing panties at the fucking Beatles. Okay. Right. That's but the beat, but the Beatles are men though. But, okay. But the Beatles were men. Same with Justin Bieber. Same with Taylor Swift. Right. Same with Britney Spears. Right. Wait. Women were the most enthusiastic. Britney Spears was a man. Based. No. Women were the most enthusiastic fan base for the Beatles, for Taylor Swift, for Britney Spears, for Justin Bieber, right? Who is also not a woman, as far as I know. Um, but, okay, uh, same with the Spice Girls, same with the fucking Backstreet Boys, same with all of these freaking, you know, phenomena, okay? Women, major fan base, okay? You know what concert I would pay Okay, I'm not going to say I'd pay, like, $2,000 to see anybody live, okay? But you know what concert I would pay, let's say, $200, right? $200 to go and see Rage Against the Machine. Okay. Soundgarden, right? I would have paid that kind of money to see those guys. Tragically hip if they were doing like the uh, their first three album tour, right? I would have paid money to see those guys, right? Peter Gabriel. I I I would have I would have paid money to see those acts, right? Okay, uh, were there women throwing their panties at Peter Gabriel from the audience? Right? Were, I don't know. Were women demanding Genesis spring like for thousand dollar, two thousand dollar, ten thousand dollar tickets to take them to see freaking uh, Rage Against the Machine? No. No. Nobody did that. Right? <sighs> so all you're complaining about is that all of these acts that attracted so much attention the boy bands the girl bands right the justin bieber's the britney spears the taylor swift's the you know all of those right women demand their men buy the tickets and those acts get rich despite having no real talent oh shots fired okay let's justin play bieber it. had talent Okay, I'll let's play some more. Let's play some more, Brian. I, I got some super chows I want to read. Uh, Richard Beer gives us five bucks and says, would women be this competitive and shallow 
uh, after all technology, which makes life as comfortable as it currently is, completely fails slash collapses, though. Also, why is the pick me girl the mirror image of the stereotypical mean girl? I don't know that there's even a difference. It, it's it's not really well defined. No. Um, I, can you please just like Hannah, can she make a distinction between a mean girl and a pick me? Because that she's saying they're the same. That yeah. definition doesn't apply. Like tomboys, I've never seen a tomboy engage in this behavior. No, they're not interested. And they and honestly, I haven't really seen tomboys say, "Well, I'm not like the other girls." They're just doing their thing, because yeah. that's what defines a tomboy. And I'm not saying yeah. it doesn't define a feminine girl who's genuinely feminine. Let's let's just call it. You know, we need a new term: doing their no, own I thing, girls. Yeah, Doing well, their I, own thing, girls. Feminine or, I, or masculine. I do talk about being a tomboy recently because of the whole thing with, like, uh, if I'd been, uh, if I was six years old right now, I'd probably have a whole freaking bunch of adult mental health experts trying to convince me to, like, transition. Yeah. Okay. So that's a different, that's a different beast, but yes. A different beast, so let's not get into it. Okay. Blade Kaiser gives us did you read the did you read the super chat above that a lot of these women do, are seem to be in a state of arrest these Sorry. things disappear after a while so okay. uh no i read that one i read that one okay all right yeah. okay just wanted to so blade kaiser gives us um five dollars and said just the tip thank you blade kaiser and then one more from richard he says for five dollars karen depending on the type of emf detector that he purchased it can also be used to determine if any wireless listening devices are operating in the vicinity. However, there is a learning curve in determining just what the particular emissions are coming from. The more you know. Well, I don't think any Department of Homeland Security agents have been in my house planting listening devices. You never know. You there could know. be like a black, like one of those black vans outside, you know. Okay, can I, uh, can I say something really catty? Yes. Brace yourselves. All right. Okay, this is really fucking catty. She's never read those books. What, Twilight? No, no, no. The books behind her. Arena, oh. uh, Anna Car Car <laughs> Her big brain books? Her, her big brain shelf? Yeah, her big brain shelf. It's like, I'm looking at this, I'm like, okay, unless she is the most delicate of, uh, of readers, those books have never been cracked open. And, and maybe she's just showing them? But, so she bought a bunch of books just to show, okay, maybe she has them on Kindle or something, and she's like, ah, I'm like, uh, I don't know, it seems a little dishonest to, to show books you don't read. Uh, I, you know, I never show a book I don't read. Like, all the books behind me, I have read. Oh, God, I, I don't have any books on display. They're all in the office. Most of them are, like, said and awk and you know understanding python and yeah and... like my books are uh currently the history of banking uh <laughs> the history well, be of careful banking. with that one <laughs> yeah uh okay <laughs> i've got a handful of i've got a handful of books almost all the books in the house are uh, the history sense. of banking is fascinating um the history of money uh medieval Europe, uh, religious poverty and the profit economy. Uh, let me say that again because I, I sound like I have a lisp. M medieval Europe, religious poverty and the profit economy. Uh, the Tain, uh, like Norwegian folk tales and a bunch of other stuff. All of which I'm actually reading, you know. And I'm just, I'm just like, I, I told you this was catty. I don't yeah, think no, she's read the but, books. But yeah, no, I, I doubt it. And and it's like. Uh, when I think about like all of the books that my husband has bought over the years we've been together, it's probably like eight thousand dollars worth of books, and they're all about coding languages and programming frameworks and uh, full stack development and all kinds. I was of actually other thinking crap of like uh, that. I'll actually throw this out to the audience. I've been thinking about because I got a an Amazon wish list of books. Because that's one of the big expenses. They get really expensive once you're up on a certain level of, of scholarship. Because, I don't know, they publish like a hundred of them total. And then they each earn <laughs> like 200 bucks. But I was thinking of yeah. putting it out there so you guys could help me get my the, my research in. 
But anyway, if you thought something of interest, just tell me. Give me a ping on that. Um, Because I know sometimes people like to support by giving something rather than just funds. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And one of the big things that I'd really like is to get books that are a little bit out of my league. <laughs> like there's one I've been eyeing for years, which is basically the fall of civilizations. Um, yeah, but it's, it's like a $200 book. Mm. Mm, yeah. Mm. Yeah, no, I, I, I start to freaking have nightmares when my husband wants to buy some $75 freaking book on coding. Mm. And I'm like, okay, well, it's going to pay off in the end, right? But Well, yeah, I mean, I think that the book will pay off in the end in that it'll deepen my analysis of the stuff going on today. Yeah, um, or, or he's going to learn how to do some new thing that's going to, yeah. like, yeah. So, I mean, but... like, if that's something that might interest you guys, because I know, like, again, some of some people prefer to just purchase things, and that is a big, big uh, expense. Oh, I, yeah. I, I, a couple of weeks ago, somebody was on the, the video that I did. It's all my fault. Somebody said, wow, you, what a what an excuse for failing and doing the least amount of work. And I'm like, I know it sounds like these these streams are low effort, but consider that I spend a lot of my time not necessarily doing production or writing things out, but I spend a lot of my time outside of the stream reading and researching. So, yeah. which informs what I, we tell you. I mean, it's, it's like, and I know that Karen does the same and I'm, Brian probably does too. Like, uh, he, or at the very least he's like looking at the videos, which, you know, kudos to Brian. Cause I'm pretty sure this is the second time he's watched this. Um, so, you know, like the, there's more that goes into these streams than just us talking. It's also us doing, going out and researching our separate spheres of interest and then coming together to argue them i guess <laughs> anyway let's watch a little bit more a little bit more. very smart and then savvy this is woman who has far surpassed most artists throughout history and their ability to stay relevant and make money with their craft and yet well, a sure not insignificant Taylor number Swift. of men oh yeah she she's able to stay relevant because all she does is bash men yeah well, it's almost like it's almost like bashing men through media is a very lucrative way of remember, making money and becoming popular. You remember that thing we responded to on Wednesday, Brian, where the woman was like... The woman was just raging at men, wanting them to die alone? Yeah, I kind of remember that. Yeah, well, but she said that men hate women. And then she said later, well, men have figured out that women hate them and their children hate them. And I'm like, well, yes, Taylor Smith expresses hatred towards men. So men don't like her. I, this is not really rocket science? Okay? Like, what the hell? All right, let's yeah. let's hear a little bit more. Men are provoked to outrage at just the sight of her on their TVs. They put down her talent. They say she can't sing that good. She's not that great of an artist. And listen, one's taste in music is absolutely subjective. But I don't have to like the Beatles to understand why so many people think that they were great. But because she's popular with, with women... women no, it's well, not because she's my... popular with women. It's because she expresses hatred towards men. Go ahead, Brian. Oh, well, I was just going to say, like, Lindsay's not a big fan of the Beatles, but she does get why they're very popular. I, I think she has bad taste because the Beatles are great. <laughs> I mean, if even if you don't like every album or every era, you'll like, like, at least an, an album or, like, a specific era, whether you like the Mop Top Beatles or the you know post weed beetles or the the long hair beard like on the decline beetles like whatever it is yeah. you know there's gonna be a like an area you know you're either revolver or your sergeant pepper or something but there but yeah. there is a I, I can acknowledge that taylor swift is popular without saying like basically saying look that's not for me and that's the funny thing is that for a long time in in the last de decade or so we've been told if this guys this is you i don't care if you like this it's not made for you and now that men are like well i guess it's not made for me they're like why don't you like this <laughs> yeah no and like okay tell me tell me anybody anybody who could listen to the beatles blackbird and not 
love that. Which movie. one? What 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 Blackbird. Beatles thing? Blackbird. Blackbird. Yeah. Yeah. Like Yeah, I mean there are you know what? There are songs that they've done that people like and they didn't even know they did it. Yeah. Like there are songs that you like that you don't even know the Beatles did. And if you heard it, you'd be like, "Oh shit, that's a Beatles song." Um Yeah, no, like it's it's like um Starry Starry Night or whatever, you know, that tribute to Vincent van Gogh, right? And it was done by that freaking dude that did Bye Black Bye Miss American Pie. Night. Yeah, that's a beautiful song. Bye yeah. Bye Miss American Pie. I hated Bye Bye Miss American Pie. Don McLean, Don Star McLean, yeah. Don McLean, yeah. But Starry Starry Night. Oh. Oh. It's just <laughs> I like I like Bye Bye Miss American Pie. But I um like it. I, like it. Uh, that's okay, you don't have to. I also yeah, like no, but Spoon no, Man. Okay, but let's let's I, be I this know, Spoon Man. Spoon Man. No, Jesus Christ pose. <laughs> Jesus Christ pose is good too. I knew you were gonna say that though. Yeah, yeah, no, and then also the uh, the one with the uh, rust rusty cage. Yeah, that one. Yeah. Oh yeah. Oh that one. Oh. Yeah. Okay, I'm sorry, Allison. Go ahead. What were you gonna say? I really like angry music. I wish I could en I could engage in this conversation, but although I do like a lot of music, I do not retain any memory of the bands. Or the sounds, the song. This the song is why title. I would, I would demolish Allison in music trivia. Yes, you would. Game. You would probably. I know. Demolish I know. On every aspect of trivia, because I. I, I, I think could... Karen could give me some stiff competition. She's she's pretty knowledgeable, especially oh, of like yeah, 80s no. and 90s it... stuff, right? No, so... no, 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 no. The only reason it, why I, I anything, know anything, anything from the 1930s onward. Oh yeah. I can kick your ass. Well, we don't have to do a trivial <laughs> pursuit. Like, you know, and I'll just be like the one that's ever. No, just a, uh, what's me. the next line? Hmm? Oh, what's the next lyric type of thing? Yeah, yeah. What's the next lyric yeah. in the song? I, okay. I, I could, I would kill with that. Okay. Yeah. Uh, and I would be slayed. I know this. I, 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 I know that this is a, this is not an ability I have, but let us continue. All right, so I got a couple super chats again, or super chows again from Richard Vieira. So he he likes to send them through. We have to read them. He gives us five bucks and says, "You don't know for certain whether and just which consumer products actually have listening microphones built right into them, out of the box, and just who they are sending said audio captures to." There is speculation that the switch on the smart speakers don't actually disable the microphone, but rather it just tells the device to not respond to the commands from the user. As to give the illusion that the microphone is not listening while the switch is in the mute position. And then he says, for $5, Bashing men is lucrative, but somehow Anita Sarkeesian is no longer currently relevant. Yes, she is. She's actually working in game studios. Countdown until she claws her way back into trying to be relevant again, though. There will be a replacement for Tay-Tay, who will eclipse her, and will overnight, she will be thrust into the dumpster of, of obscurity. Uh, only until they replace her with the next... Um, you know, young lady singer. I don't know if you noticed, but every every decade there's a different young female pop star that is essentially saying what the um, the studios want, and there are plenty of women who will listen. And I think it gets a little bit more radical every time. So, not saying it's a psyop, but it sounds like a psyop. Well, yeah, and also like um, listening is going to like the thing is that Taylor Swift will likely have. A warm cock her entire life because she's a millionaire she's a billionaire right uh -huh. she doesn't she's not dealing with what the average woman is dealing with right the single biggest thing that will improve an average woman's odds of having a satisfactory and happy life is having a relationship with a man and all of these forces are coming together to make you sabotage that like yeah and uh and it's unfortunate to see and the thing is that when you point this out you get these defensive responses like oh you're just a pick me yeah yeah and all of this picking at your looks and i'm like you can't tell that i'm not really presenting myself in such a way that my looks are the focus like yeah um that's not my point i'm trying to tell you things that will make your life significantly better 
if you listen mm. and okay i mean it's okay if you want to attack me i'm just yeah free servant here you've been with a man for 26 years and he's not going anywhere and so you know uh and you don't have to straighten your hair you know or use some kind of well, here's the other thing I got into an argument like product in it and you don't this, have to apply makeup every day and you don't have to like look perfect all the time. No. And, and and here's the other thing I don't like I don't have to do which is what I got into with one of this women on the on the oh uh, the relationship was beautiful then I asked him to to jump through hoops to prove he loved me. Yeah. I got into it and I was like, well, that's just an extra. Don't ask for that. Like yeah. you don't ask for it. Okay? And then she, this woman was like, well, and I said, you know, I get those extras. You know, Jonathan goes out of his way to do things for me. Mm -hmm. Like uh, he renovated the front foyer of the Badger Cave because I yeah. was feeling depressed about what we had accomplished over the 10 years. And he's like, well, why don't I show you? And then he put all of these pictures of all of the, the events that we've gone to, all of the artwork we've created, all of the, all of the publications we've done. And the events we've put on, like the convention, which apparently was the best convention ever, um, and all oh. of this other stuff, and he put it on the walls so that every time I walk in, I see that. It's been, been oh. great for my mood, generally. And, you know, oh. he does things like that. He goes out of his way to do things like that. And, you know, if anybody ever comes to the Badger Cave, now there's something to see. Yeah. You know, there's something that's worth coming to look at. And he does things like that. I don't ask him to do it. I don't demand it. I'm not like this woman saying, oh, wouldn't it be great if you did this thing? And actually what she's saying is, I'm going to dump you if you don't, bitch. Um, and I don't have to do that to get these extras. And she was, and this woman came back with, well, well how, how can you judge women for, for demanding these extras? And I'm like, well, when you get them. And I'm like, but the point is that I don't. Like... I don't you ask. Don't, yeah, you don't demand. And it's it's like my mom, she, you know, when she was first with my dad and and they were, you know, they were struggling. They just bought a house and they were like building a garage and pouring a driveway and, you know, and and doing all of that stuff. And she said, you know, he'd come home from work and he'd pick some dandelions from uh, the flower beds and he'd bring them to, you know, to her when he came in like he'd be like these are for you and uh and she'd put them in a vase because she was like well he's thinking about me and he's not pulling my he's not he's not taking my roses that i planted or you know he's 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 not damaging my garden my flower bed that i you know planted he's he's but it shows that he's thinking about me yeah, exactly. Well, yeah. It's just, it's it like, just shows that they're thinking about you and you cannot demand that. Yeah. Because once you demand, first of all, once you, de it's, it's <coughs> hollow. Once you demand it, it's hollow. And you know it's hollow, which is why once he, you successfully train him to go through that hoop, you put up another hoop because it's hollow, because it's a you thing. All right. You become a woman who gets those extras. You don't demand them. And she didn't understand that. Well, if you want to be know. a woman who gets those extras, you might want to listen to women who do. Yeah. Okay. And, and because so many men don't get why she's popular with women, they write off her talent and demean her. And again, can't even stand the sight of her at a football game. I guess I could make an entire video about how pop culture that women like is often demeaned. Maybe I'll do that some other time. But back to the original subject of pick. Thank you. Thank you, because this is a stupid digression. Well, it's it's basically. Wait, 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 wait. How does that even work? Like, Whoa. if women are more than half of the population, why why is it a problem that like some men don't care for it? Yeah. And do men demand that women like what men like? Because she. Because I've never heard that men's before. Men's validation. Okay, okay. You know, uh, honey. If you don't like the song Hey Joe hmm, or Down by the River, hmm, if you don't like those songs, then yeah, 
I just can't be with you. You don't appreciate art. Hey, Joe, where are you going with that gun in your hand? I'm going to shoot my lady. Caught her messing around with another man. Hmm? Down by the river, I shot my baby. Down by the river. Okay? If women, if women don't like those songs, right? It means there's something wrong with them. I mean, yeah, that means they don't have taste, so they're like too concerned with, I don't know, with incidental shit. That but they, but that's okay because they'll twerk to like murdering their girlfriends. Well, she had it coming. I think. I mean, wasn't there? There's a Beatles song about a guy threatening to kill um, <coughs> a woman. I I can't remember how it goes. I think John Lennon sang it. But there's a Beatles song about it too. Yeah. And I don't mean the Lennon song like "Woman is the N word of the world." That, that that's some different shit. Yeah, yeah. But I mean, like you got you got all kinds of songs by men about how women done them wrong and how women like were mean to them and how women, you know, they they're they're faithless and horrible and all of that. Nobody expects women to like those songs. Although I do like Hey Joe and I do like Down by the River. Um, yeah. But, you know, because Neil Young, eh, I guess he's an acquired taste, but. Um, and Jimi Hendrix. I mean, how can you not like that? I like but, some uh, Jimi Hendrix. Uh, yeah, yeah. But um, no, like massive talent. But but y you're looking at you're looking at a situation where they're like, oh, you don't want to hear the constant man bashing. You're not respecting her art. Oh, I see. Yeah. And, it, and well, I mean, these these girls like the, a lot of rap music is pretty. Uh, I I don't want to say like problematic or anything, but there's definitely a lot of criticism of women. I'll put it that way. Ludacris had a great song called "Use a Ho," <laughs> which oh, is one of my favorite Ludacris songs. But yeah. Oh, did, did you? Ever and women loved it. They ate that shit up. Oh yeah, yeah. Did you ever listen to that? I think it was Johnny Cash. Might. Oh yeah. Might have been. Uh, took a shot of cocaine and I shot my baby down. I shot her <laughs> down and then I went to bed. And oh, the song is called "Run for Your Life" by the Beatles. Yeah, that's the one I was thinking about. Um. Okay. Shall we do just a little bit more? All right. Yeah, let's do a little bit more. Now that Take we're back girls. on topic. Women are in competition with one another on multiple fronts, the same as men are. We're competing for the best men on the market. Yes, of course. But it goes a lot deeper than that. Women are also competing for what feels like society's limited attention span for women. They're competing for jobs and industries where women are still the minority. They're competing for leadership roles and the chance to advance. And it often feels like only one or two women will get picked to keep moving up. And oh, unfortunately, here, look, at, look at this, the statist argument, the fundamental statist argument. Society can't be free because when it's free, it oppresses women. This is like the fundamental statist argument. And she calls herself a libertarian. Yeah. Women, women were still viewed as chattel. chattel. Oh, oh, good Lord. Yeah. Okay. Oh, God. Does that man ever have sex? Okay. I can't imagine a universe in which that happens. Maybe he ejaculates that every time he, he orgasms. You're literally chai chattel. <laughs> Sorry. Okay. I just want to say to this the, the uh, message before, before you continue. Sorry. Um, that's the the statist opinion. And why is it that you think that women shouldn't compete? Like, I mean, well, there's women... there's there's competition that's tearing other women down. But in a meritocracy, you're going to compete with other women yeah. for jobs. Like, that's yeah. what's going to happen. Like, it's like, oh, my God, men have constructed a meritocracy and there's competition. In it. Yes, bitch. Yes. That's that's the nature of a meritocracy. Right. You are going to have to compete with other women for things in a meritocracy. And, you know, there's that competition in which you earn recognition. And then there's the competition that you're decrying in which you basically undermine each other's right to resources do you see the difference it's like one is you're gaining a skill or ability that benefits everyone and the other is you're tearing down someone else 
There's a difference there. I wonder if she understands the difference. Well. So, um, when men are competing for jobs, only a few of them get it too. So. Even less now. It's, it's weird. It's like she thinks that men are just being given these great jobs and women are like f fighting tooth and nail to like, so one of them scrapes by and gets something. No, I, I, actually, most men get rejected too. Yes. In fact, they re get rejected more by definition because of all of the initiatives to increase the acceptance of women. So you're, you don't, you have a, a playing field slanted for you and you're still compa complaining about the meritocracy. Yeah, well, here's don't the even thing. Get me started on that shit. Maybe men are better at navigating a meritocracy inherently for the same reason why you keep calling them toxically masculine. Like, they they just have an instinctual desire to see themselves in terms of achievement and their effect on the environment. And also, they have a greater level of cooperation with each other. Strangely enough, I know that sounds strange, but men are more likely to share research with each other, for example. Yeah. And it used to be that male like scientists would share research with female <coughs> scientists, but now they're, they're they don't do that as much because of Me Too shit, All right? So it's just yeah, men, they, men, men, are, men were always more likely to mentor their uh, their grad students and stuff like that, right? Okay, so uh, men know male how to or mentor. Female they know how to cooperate. Were. They understand yeah. meritocracies better, and yeah. honestly, women could improve by looking at men and saying hey how can i learn from them but that's not they do we can't do that we can't yeah, no, recognize men, men that still... maybe maybe men having constructed all of this edifice of the modern society through their cooperation and their meritocracy might have something to teach women no 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 and and here's the thing too right like because you have you have like the mentorship thing in academia and stuff right and men used to be uh, much more likely to mentor uh, their underlings, I guess, right, of either sex, right? And uh, they're, they're not as likely to do that with female underlings now because of the Me Too stuff, right? But they're still more likely to take a female grad student under their wing than a female professor is. They're still more likely to do that. Like, I'm sorry, but you have to realize, you have to, re like, you got to and, and encourage. I think, I think this is future focused, right? I think this is yeah, future absolutely focused. future focused. It's like, well, somebody's going to have to carry the torch when I'm gone, mm -hmm. right? Or when I'm too old, somebody's going to have to. Women don't get to, over that competition enough to, women to recognize. Women never fucking get older than 30. They stay 30 forever. Mm. Yeah, Mentally. they don't acknowledge the 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 eventual need to the pick a successor. The passing. The, the, okay. the eventual need to pass on the torch. The eventual need that somebody's going to have to take up the work when they're too old to do it. Women don't have that, right? Or in general. Yeah, anymore, the thing. Right? They used to have that yep. because matrons used to be well Teaching. respected matriarchs used to be well respected the elder women in the church used to be well respected right all the wise women in viking yes. society used to be yes. well respected they, they used to be well respected they were looked on with honor and you know like you have a special status because you are older and wise and you have the experience of your entire life to to help uh the younger generations figure things out right? And, and you are valued, right? And it's women like this with her fucking drawn outside the line lipstick, right? Who's clinging to 30 by the atoms uh, on the tips of her fucking fingernails. She's never going to give it up. She's never going to not dye her hair, right? She can get gray, right? You'll never know. You'll never know. Mm -hmm. She's never going to let her roots grow out. She's always going to freaking have she's gonna plump her lips she's gonna do the botox she's gonna stay young forever she's gonna be 30 years old forever until 30 years old looks like it's been stretched across her damn skull until she looks like nancy pelosi 
and she's bathing in the blood of virgins, like Elizabeth Bathory. Okay. Also, she doesn't understand the difference between a comp. Comp I, I don't think she understands the difference between criticism. Well, criticism and um, what is a good word for the mean girl stuff? It's not criticism. Deriding, it is degrading, denigrating, destruction, derogating. hostility. It's like uh, hostility, what is like... it? Um, destruction, warfare, like something, a word that annihilation, uh, really... reputation, annihilation. Yeah, reputation, or emotional she annihilation. She doesn't understand the difference between meritocracy and war, is basically oh. because you know, men know the difference. They know when they're at war with another man, and they know when they're engaging in criticism related to a meritocracy. I don't think women understand that, because when, uh, like, for example, if you're a woman and you're listening to us, we would be mentoring you to understand how to develop the skills to give yourself a soft landing when you're on the other side of menopause, right? But... That is not the same as competing with you for resources. I don't think I, myself or Karen, are competing with any other women for resources. Because we're not going to take your man away. I know I'd be really happy to see more women happy with men. Like, that would, that would be awesome. I really like seeing women happy with men. Maybe I'm a weirdo. But yeah, that makes no. me happy to see relationships strong relationships forming to see women have the skills to make sure that they can create families. Like it, I'm, I'm ecstatic that somehow we touched, for example, uh, Cassie J and improved her relationship with her husband. Yeah. You know, and now oh, she no, is happy amazing. with him. Yeah. Yeah. And I love to hear that. I love to hear like occasionally on these, these videos that I do, I get some woman who says, you know, I appreciate what you said, because it improved my life. Yeah. It improved, it improved my attitude towards men. I listened to you and I feel like that made my life better. Right? Yeah. And no, that's it's, great it's to same, hear. It's the same with men too. Like apparently we're teaching everybody to be misogynistic, but like the number of, of messages that I've gotten from men that have been like, yeah, thank you for what you do. Because, you know, I was starting to hate women. And now I don't, right? Because at least I understand why they're behaving the way they behave and why my situation is the way it is. And like, I kind of understand what's going on now and it doesn't feel mean and it doesn't feel arbitrary. It just feels like, uh, you know, uh, things are a little messed up, but maybe uh, I don't have hope, but at least I don't See hate where... women. Yeah. Um, I, I get the, I don't hate women because at least I, you know, like there's a woman who's actually feels like listening, like they're listening to you. Yeah. Um, well, and, listen, and the, not, not, not putting how you affect them first instead yeah, of yeah. the feelings that you're going through. Right. But it's like, that's that to me, you know, to know that, I, and I know from the community that I'm part of, you know, there have been multiple relationships that have formed out of that community and oh yeah they've been positive mm -hmm. you know um lauren I, I would say uh brian and 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 uh lindsay met through the community i believe yes and so did um, lauren and mike and lauren and mike and then there's also some other people you know or or i've seen relationships form that's what i want to see yeah i want to see women grow old with men they love that's what, that's the world that I want. That's the whole fucking point. And I'm not competing. I'm not competing with Anna Cox with whatever man that she wants. I'm trying to tell her, you want to, you want a really good relationship. Then you got to jettison some of your attitudes. And this is a big one. Like, why are yeah. you, why are you gay? You, you having this resentment towards women because of Taylor Swift or, or whatever else that this, this, what, what was it? Because men don't like hearing about how mad, be bad they are. Yeah, anyway, like, I have to go. I have yeah, to go. We probably My should story. should stop yeah. this. Okay, just just right. wait. We'll, 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 we got pretty far, right? Brian, this is not bad. 
We got eight and a half minutes eight in. And a half this minutes. Yeah, that's a, out of a half an hour, so that's that's fine. I got some super right. super chows to read and. Uh, okay, I'm I'm gonna go. You, I have yeah, to go. just go. Well, one of them is a recommendation for you, so I should probably read it before you oh. leave. Great indoors gives us five dollars. I know, I know. Hold on. Great indoors gives us five dollars and says. Music tip for Karen. Check out the album Handsome by the band Handsome from 1997 if you also like the band Quicksand. So, All there right. you go. Uh, thank you. Karen, do you want to say your goodbyes before I keep going? Goodbye, all. I have to get in my new-to-me car. And, oh, uh, congratulations. You got a new car? From... It's a lesson. New to me. Awesome. Ooh. I it's, hope you it's enjoy a 2007 it. 2007 Lexus, mechanic owned, not a mechanic like my dad, uh, who, when the car would start making noise and you'd call him and say, it's making a noise, and he'd say, turn the radio up. Um, but the other kind of mechanic uh, who takes care of his car, and it was like a private sale from the mechanic who looks after my car, my my dad's car and uh, it was the price was right and we could buy it cash and and yeah no and it's i love it and it's it's beautiful can i it's uh, just not, it's 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 an suv so i before can before like, you go haul things in it yes that sounds awesome before you yeah. go congratulations on your new car monday at new, this new time. to me car new to you monday car. at monday at noon or monday at one uh, I guess it would be uh, noon for you, because this okay. is a pretty good time. So, right. right? It's looking good. It's a good time. All right. All right. Well, text me. Text me. I'll, I'll definitely text you to remind me. Okay. Noon. All right. All right. So, we got it set right. up, guys. We're not going to leave you hanging. Let's All go. Right. Okay. All right. Bye, Karen. Bye, Bye Karen. Uh, okay. I got another super chow from Richard Bier. Uh, I'm going to make Karen disappear. Uh, where is it? Um, I'm gonna, I have another. Yeah, here, here we go. Bye, Karen. Um, Richard Bier gives us. Uh, let me just make sure I got this. Five dollars and says he had it coming from the Chicago soundtrack and the petty reasons why he had it coming to him, and that was celebrated as empowering for women. I, I don't. I didn't. No, I've I don't think it was. It. I don't think it was celebrated at the time. It might be now, though. Yeah, I, uh, maybe. I don't know. I, I've never seen that. Um, and then we got one more from Richard Bier for $5. He says, remember all the female media company that went out of business after two years and how the work environment devolved into Mean Girls versus other Mean Girls? Um, and I think that's yeah. it. Oh, no, I got one more uh, from Richard Bier. Again, he gives us $5 and says, Allison, wanting women to grow old with the man they love means that you want women to grow old. Heresy. All right, thank wow. you for that. I want women to do something that's inevitable. Yes. Well, that's how Polly they would see it. Or you remind them of it or something. I don't know. I don't know, Allison. I don't make the rules. They just are what they are. Okay, that's all the Super Chows. And uh, I don't think... I think I, there was a Super Chat. I can't post it, but I can read it really quick. Um, Albert Nada says... For two dollars, he get, Canadian says that should have read only one problem, and then another two dollars Canadian says, "How does autocorrect get died from fe from few fluid feud? Maybe I don't know, man. Proofread. Okay. 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 All right. So I believe that the mm -hmm. X space that I spoke about earlier in the day or in the stream is actually tomorrow at three p.m. That's what you Central. said. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> All right, so it's tomorrow. Okay, so sorry if I made that mistake uh, and I directed you at the wrong time. So just keep a, keep a lookout on the Twitter and uh, we'll see you there, hopefully. And um, once again, we are doing a monthly fundraiser. It's very much appreciated if you would put a few shekels in the hat. Thank you to everybody who helped out today. There's a couple people, very much appreciated. We have, let's see, uh, uh, 1,830 left and about seven days left. So it's pretty critical to get that done. Feedthebadger.com slash just the tip. Oh no, sorry. Feedthebadger.com slash support. And if you're listening to this after the show and you just want to send us a comment about anything that we've said, 
you want to correct me on anything or anybody else, because I know you guys like doing that. Uh, or you want us to send us something esoteric that will confuse the hell out of us. Or you just want to tell us we're not screaming into the void. You can do so at feedthebadger.com slash just the tip. We get the full benefit of whatever funds you send, and you get the benefit of avoiding YouTube's minefield of comment enhancement, shall we say. All right, so once again, support the show, feedthebadger.com slash support. Feed the, um, give us a tip and a statement, comment, feedthebadger.com slash just the tip. And also give me a heads up on whether or not you'd like to be able to purchase books for me because that would be cool. That's like my favorite thing in the world, books. And uh, I <laughs> tend to destroy them. So maybe, like I said, maybe Hannah Cox is just really delicate with her books. But those books don't look like they've been loved at all. All right. Does that sound right. really bad? <laughs> okay, back to you. I don't know. All right. Well, uh, thanks, guys, for coming on the show. If you like this video, please hit like. Subscribe if you're not already subscribed. Hit the bell for notifications. Leave us a comment. Let us know what you guys think about what we discussed on the show today. You can watch the full length um, Hannah Cox video in the description. Uh, shout out to Hannah Cox for not hopefully, you know, trying to cancel us for responding to her. Um, and please, please, please share this video because Sherry is caring. Thanks guys so much for coming on today's episode of the Rant Zerker and we'll talk to you all in the next video. These are machines, dude, okay? They are literal machines. They are talking point machines. They are impossible to fucking deal with, especially if you have like, especially if you have like a, a couple dudes who have good memory on top of that too. Holy shit, you're fucked.